Six, and we've got a, a budget meeting scheduled, and okay. some of our people Good. are here. And uh, Kevin George has called me, and he had a mechanical difficulty today that he had to take care of, and he won't be here. Kevin Mooneyham said last week that he'd be in Marion County and wouldn't be able to attend, but those of us that are here are here, and uh, we're ready to proceed. And uh, at the very um, Wayne Prater, the trustee, asked to go first, and I'll let him go first, Doug. And after Wayne, I'm going to let Doug Baudry answer some questions that we had last week that he has uh, has researched answers to. But uh, Wayne, you come on up here and give us whatever you've got. I didn't make a copy of all their budgets, but it's... It's all right, have you given there. everybody one of these though right here? Those, mm -hmm. All right, and Tony's got one too. On the proposed budget for 2012 and 2013, if you look on page 10, at the top of the page, the, the fees in, in lieu of salary, uh, the actual figures in 2010 and, and 2011, uh, saved, saved by the bell. <laughs> uh, the uh, the trustee's office turned in. The actual figure was a hundred and seventy nine thousand seven hundred seventeen dollars. You see that on your budget up there at the top. All right, my budget for that year was was a hundred and thirty thousand and eight dollars. So we turned back in an extra forty nine thousand and seven hundred dollars or seven hundred and nine dollars to the county general. This year our uh, uh, projection was that we would turn in a hundred and eighty five thousand dollars. You see that on the trustee four mm -hmm. five six one oh in two thousand eleven and twelve. Uh, as of right now, if we collect in May and June, which it looks like we will, we will actually turn in $189,145.70. Our budget this year uh, is $143,049, so we'll have an excess of $46,096.70 going back into County General this year, and it looks like we're on target for that. If you'll turn over to uh, uh, page 14, the budget that, that we turned in this year, the total is $150,180 down at the bottom of page 14 for the 2012-2013. If you take that $150,180 from what we will turn in this year of $189,147, it leaves a, a surplus of $38,967.70. If if this budget is approved the way it is, <clears throat> and you've got two deputies. One is a uh, part time, one full time. Yes, sir. Uh, that one that is part time, though it's becoming more of a full time job all the time because of all of the reconciliation on the checks is done in our office now instead of being done in the different departments. We had a lot of uh, confusion on that in the very beginning when we went from once to to checks, but but we have that straightened out now. Some of the departments <coughs> kept writing warrants when they should have been writing checks, and it was it was pretty okay. pretty rough there for a while, but it, it's okay now. Is there more than one person taken out of the 169 part-time personnel? No, sir. That's one. That's one. Uh, <coughs> employee and then the one yeah. above it is one employee. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Two employees, that's all. In in the past my mm -hmm. wife did come in and help us some, but she wasn't paid anything. Okay. All right. And looking on down through there everybody, state retirement, social security, and Medicare are all functions of the salary. Communication line three oh seven. You're asking for $2,000 yes, in Yes, sir, that. that's the telephone, and, and we're already 
uh, really tied on that right now. Yeah, he's gone up. He's already gone over. Pardon? We've already gone over this year. So. I have. Okay. Well, it's been already this year. 1606, and it was 1500. We, we approved 1500 last year. Yeah. And the uh, the other big increase is down there on the. Uh, uh, maintenance agreement that's with the local government to computer system and this is the first year that we'll have it you know a full year so it's up to five thousand eight hundred and sixty dollars that's another pretty good increase right there all right <clears throat> next line item data processing services that's another con uh, service agreement isn't it uh yes sir that's from uh, the uh, paperwork that we get out of nashville mm -hmm. uh, the tax assessor's office pays half and we pay half but this is this is what we had to pay this year and we were a little bit short on that i, I thought there was going to be a couple of books that we didn't have to get and uh but we we wound up purchasing them anyway and uh, uh hopefully it'll be within uh that uh 2500 or so uh next year but we, okay we raised it up just just in case you know so you spent, we had approved 1875 last year. <clears throat> yeah, I'm And you went over, and you had to go over that just a little bit too. Yeah, I'm over uh, $383.91. Because of those extra books? Yeah. Okay. Well, does it, does it work so that you get, if you get an extra book last year, that th this year you might have I, part I, of that one to go on? No, I think we'll have, I think we'll, uh, not order those this year. Okay. Yeah. So my question is, would that cause that line item to go down? Yes. Well, it would be. Uh, uh, Did you sort of get two years, a year and a half worth of books in one one? See what I'm asking? Uh, yeah. What it, what it is is those uh, those, those tax books that mm -hmm. come in, and, and with everything in the computer system, we won't be. We need won't have to have to look it up in the mm -hmm. computer quicker and you can look it up in the books and we have that lookup station there too in the front you know most lawyers come in and use that all right any questions anybody else uh, uh, increase on postage yes i was going to go down to it oh, well, I thought, uh, i'm sorry use me on that line yeah on that, that one line yeah on okay. that one, one line <clears throat> well, he's got on that line twenty four hundred. But you said it. that's my question. If you're not going to buy those books this time, what, uh, do can you get by with the eighteen seventy five like you did last year? Mm. Well, if we have to, we can pull it from somewhere else. Maybe you know, buy a few less stamps. <laughs> All right. The po did you go over on postage? Not yet. But, okay. But we're we're going to have to buy some more before the end of the year, though. And dues and memberships seventy seven fifty. And the maintenance agreement you've already talked about, if it's gone up. Yes, sir. 58.60, okay. Yeah. Now, the and that's pretty close to what yeah. it actually is, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, that's exactly what it's going to be. We've already got the bill on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the dues and membership, is, is, is nothing in there for that. And the uh, legal notice is oh, yes, recording right. court costs for 750. 750 for it. Uh, and it was it we, was 500 last year. We can We can do 500 on that. Okay. What did we spend this year? Can't spend it. Yet. All right. Maintenance agreements, and then uh, after that's postal charges, three forty line item three forty eight, thirty seven hundred. And last year, we had thirty seven hundred is what we put. Is that going to be sufficient? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And then printing stationery and forms five hundred is what you asked for, and that's the same as we had last year. And office supplies twenty five hundred. We can drop that to two thousand, I believe. Okay. You get that? Okay. All right. Now, anybody, any questions? From the trustee on any of these other line items. How'd you drop that 317 back down to? That data process? Uh, no. Didn't. We you didn't, didn't drop it. We didn't drop it. We just had, I just could put a question mark in. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, 
last year we did 317, 1875. Yeah, I'm 383 over that, so. Yeah, yeah, you was yeah. up around 21, was it 21 something? Uh, 317. Eighteen seventy five. Eighteen seventy five. What's he spent? Twenty two fifty. Twenty two fifty. Oh, he's already spent. Oh, okay. already spent twenty two fifty. That'll be all that's spent, though. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're gonna leave that. You want to put it twenty two fifty? Then Wayne's that all right? That'll be fine. All right. Mm -hmm. well, let's change twenty four to twenty two fifty. Well, twenty two fifty nine. Pardon. Well, let's make it 2260 then. We'll have a dollar left over. <laughs> All right. What percentage uh, of the part time personnel and the deputy have you got included here? 5%. 5%. I didn't know what they were going <clears> to. <throat> give the uh, office, uh, you know, the mm -hmm. trustee, mm -hmm. and it's up $988. If they can have 988 that will be good. And I asked Diane about if I could refuse that, and she said no. <laughs> no, you can't. That's right. That's a, that's a shame, isn't it? But, but uh, I think it would only <laughs> only be fair. That, that's 1.6%. Yes. And uh, if we gave gave them 1988, it would be fair. Uh, most people don't realize how much money is handled in all, that office over. Another $5. Uh, uh, I I well, it's, they, there's over $5 million comes mm -hmm. through there, you know. Mm -hmm. And you've got to have people that you can trust and that can handle that. That's right. And, uh, uh, I, and I think you could see by, by what's being turned <laughs> <laughs> your two, well, your two are all right uh, uh, on that category. Yeah. That's uh, what's turned back in. You know, it's. Uh, I, th I think it's been operated a, 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 as well as as efficiently as you can yeah. do it. Mm -hmm. And you turn back in forty six thousand. Uh, that what you said at the very beginning. Uh, yeah, the first year it was forty nine thousand seven oh nine extra, you know, yeah. above what my budget was. Yeah. And uh, uh, this year it's going to be uh, forty one thousand six hundred sixty four seventy, providing everything stays the same. The uh, anybody got a question on on the trustees' budget? James, Bill, mm -hmm. Todd. You said your surplus was thirty-eight thousand nine hundred sixty-seven this year. Is that right? If no, uh, forty-one thousand. Thirty-eight nine sixty-seven. Uh, okay. uh, I just want to make sure I wrote it down right. That is uh, this budget that we have. If it was approved for one hundred fifty thousand, one hundred eighty dollars, you know, okay. take that away from. Uh, what we're thinking will be coming. Well, of course, next year it'll be more coming in, you know. But yeah, basically thirty-eight nine sixty-seven. Okay. With if it was passed if the this way same it is budget. right now, uh -huh. but we've already taken some, so it'll be even higher. Just from, just from what we've taken them three line items out, it'll be a little higher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Turn it, turn back in. Yeah, we've taken uh, five hundred forty seven fifty. Nine hundred dollars from back out, so it's almost forty thousand. All right. If nobody has any <coughs> questions, thank you, Wayne. I appreciate it, and we'll certainly take all of these changes under consideration. And I appreciate you answering our uh, questions that we had. Okay. And last week we had some questions, uh, and Kevin George is not here, but he asked me on the phone this afternoon to. Uh, let Doug Baudry address the, the budget committee with the answers that he had researched to those questions that were asked last week. And just uh, come on up over here, Doug, so we can all hear good. These counties are starting to run together. It's budget time. Yeah, everyone's there for right now. 
go to sign the sign. What this was, Kevin was wanting me to let you guys see this. One thing that we do, a lot of the budget committees do, once the audit comes out, you know, everybody loves looking at audit findings, but a lot of times what the budget committees do, and what we teach in our budgeting class, there should be seven of them, but um, we say, of course, you go back and you look at the budget that you passed, and you compare it to the audited fund balances at July 1st. Okay. Um, of course, you know, your last year's audit is going to have a June 30th fund balance, which is your ending fund balance for the end of the fiscal year. Okay. Um, that June 30th fund balance should be your July 1st, you know, start of year fund yeah. balance. Y'all remember, we, you guys waited until October, I guess it was, to pass your budget, wait for everything to be closed, so we knew what that, should have known what that July 1st fund balance was. Should have been closer. So this second page, <clears throat> this second page right here is straight out of the minutes, the budget that's in Bobby Smith's office, the approved budget. It's a synopsis. It's like the first couple pages, you know, the summary. You see your 7-1-2011 fund balance for each of the funds that are budgeted by the county commission. Then you have your estimated revenues, expenditures, so forth. You, what a lot of the budget committees do and what we teach in our budget class statewide is you take that 7-1-2011 number, that was given by management, and you compare it to the audited fund balance. It's on the first page. That's what I've done in this spreadsheet. Your first, your first column, that 630-2011 budgetary encumbered fund balance, that's according to what the <coughs> audit says. Um, let's talk about the, the schools down there first, because that's the first one in line. Is you see the schools, they reported to the county commission in their budget, they would have a beginning fund balance of July 1st of, I'm sorry, it's their one million three hundred and three thousand six hundred and sixty seven dollars. You see it on the mm -hmm. front page right there? You see that Miss Harrison's right mm -hmm. there? Okay. This number right here is two million one thirty four six six six. That's what this the audit said this is their encumbered fund balance at July first for a difference of a positive eight hundred and twenty thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars more in the fund balance. And that's the equivalent of nineteen thousand nine hundred fifty dollars on a penny they had 41 cents more what the tax rate would generate. Of course, the question is, how did that happen? If you look on this third page, this is straight out of the audit. For the, each of the major <coughs> funds, the auditors prepare a budgetary to actual um, comparison. It says this exhibit I-8, mm -hmm. and you can actually see, as the budget committee, you can actually see how that fund, each fund did compared to the budget. You see this first column right here says actual gap basis, that's modified accrual accounting. Then they add the encumbrances. You get your actual, you know, what actually was spent or what revenue was brought in. Then you have your budget amounts, that's your original budget, and in your final amended budget, that final column is what you, is you know the final approved budget that you guys saw at the end, and then you have your variance, and of course if it's a negative, it went under. If it's the positive, if you turn that, to that page right there, you'll see right here it says total expenditures, variance with final budget. You see that one mm -hmm. right there? What's that number right there? Seven hundred sixty-six thousand eight. 38. So they they were under expenditures by three quarters million dollars, their budget. Now look over here where it says actual budgetary basis. And you look right here, it says excess deficiency of revenues over expenditures. This is what actually happened in that fund. They ran a budget surplus, or I mean an actual surplus in the school budget. They were budgeting if you move over two columns, their final budget, you see that number? Mm -hmm. What was that one? Uh, the final was 15155 I mean, this right here, the ex they were budgeting. This is what you guys saw at yeah, budget the time. Yeah, the Yeah, they were going to be 717 in, in the hole. Yeah. You got it. But yeah. actually, you move over. What actually happened, they were 79000 in the black. And that's no, what happened. They said 797000 in the black. Seventy-nine thousand. Yeah, I'm looking right here at the what they actually went over revenue. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I see it. That's a column number four. Yes, sir. Seventy-nine thousand. Okay, so they finished the year. They went over revenue a lot under expenditure, but three quarter million dollars under budget expenditures. And they wound up in the black. 
<coughs> my bad. It's stuck to my phone. Oh, never mind. I'll do it with my phone. All right. Now the next page right here, of course the question is, what makes up that fund balance? Because it, it could be restricted <coughs> money that you can't spend except for, you know, they get grants okay. like That's every other right. fund. Mm -hmm. Could be, you know, we got a million dollars you can only spend I school buses. Tells that. Yes, sir. Okay. That's page 86. You got it. If you look down here, they went under GASB 54 reporting. This is new fund balance reporting. And it actually cleared up a lot of the fund balance reporting for these governmental funds. And it, this last fiscal year is when this accounting statement took effect. It used to be, and I'd, I'd see some places, they'd earmark something as a reserve when it really, there was no legal reason it couldn't okay. have been spent. If you notice right here on the general purpose school fund, down here in the fund balance, you see the general purpose school fund had $5,201 of restricted money. Then you move down and you see the meat of their money, 1.6 in committed, mm -hmm. and then unassigned and assigned. So the meat of it's not restricted. So what's committed, if you turn the page, this is straight out of the notes of the audit financial statements. Can you, you want to read that, Mark, That com what committed means? Committed includes amounts that can only be used for specific purposes pursuant to constraints imposed by the formal resolutions of the county commission, the county's highest level of decision-making authority, and the Board of Education, the school department's highest level of decision-making authority. And then restricted, the definition of a restricted fund balance. Amounts that have constraints placed on the use of the re resources that are either externally imposed by creditors, grantors, contributors, or laws, regulations of other governments are imposed by law through constitutional provisions or enabling legislation. Yeah, so basically what, what this is saying, well what it is saying is, except for a few thousand dollars, this money was able to be spent to balance a budget. There's no outside, outside Cannon County agency saying you can't spend that money, you know, for educational purposes. So you guys and were that, so, much, uh, that much better at the beginning of the year. Okay. Well, yes, the school department budget was. Schools, I checked their BP estimates for their May estimates and do that with every county working with on a budget. They're currently the taxpayers are funding just under $600,000 more than the minimum effort, which is now the, you know, if you give them, like you gave them some extra taxes this year, because you gave them to, that that begins, that gets it included in their maintenance effort. You can't never cut them. So they've got that money. Okay. Okay. You all understand about maintenance of effort too. Yes. The only way you can cut them is if their pupils go down. Okay. So. And their pupils are going down. Okay. All right. Um, the general fund, the next one's the general fund. If you, on the front page, if you notice there was there was a variance of about two pennies mm -hmm. on the rate, yeah. and what that was was the is council receivables revenue came in better than was projected. So we had about two cents we more. We were we were conservative on estimating our revenue mm -hmm. by about. Well, I'm talking about the closed books. Yeah, yeah. By about forty thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. I'd rather be that way as forty thousand dollars. Which is about point zero zero five. Who can guess closer than that? I'm talking about closed books. <clears throat> I know closed books, but I mean for the next year, who can estimate closer than that on this big of a budget? That's point zero zero five percent. I'm budget. talking about, you know, on your closed books, what right. you got in the bank. That's right. That's right. So and you, uh, the auditors had to from the budget. And that's what Mark. Oh no 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 no! I'm not this. I'm talking about hard numbers on that front page. Yeah, the front page. The variance was forty two thousand. From what was your closed books and what okay. the auditor said was your closed okay. books. We're not talking about budget. We're talking about. What was in the bank? What was in June, the bank? June 30th. What's that, what's that second column? The beginning balance budget that we, that's in, what, that we, we were, that's the what number we, we were working with. So that's what Mark's saying, that, that we budgeted that 609000 So we budgeted pretty close. What I'm saying is, well, yeah, when it that's got amended. Yeah, that's what, what, what he's saying, saying. yeah. What I'm just saying, saying is, that's why, that's why you wait. We, I know you guys were looking at tax increase. That's why you waited, mm -hmm. get better numbers. So 42000 yeah. Back that right, page. Going e one over here now. Go ahead. Okay. The revenues. You see, the revenues came in for the general fund, hundred sixty-three thousand better than budget. Mm -hmm. You flip down a couple pages over, and we'll see how we did on the expenditure side. We budgeted 
the excess on page 66. You, we budgeted final amount from last year to be in the hole 664340 If you look at the actual with the budget, you know, encumbered expenditures right there, the encumbrances and the expenditures, we're in the hole $179,660. That was before the tax increase of 11 cents into the general fund. So you guys, with the tax increase, you know, you... With the tax increase, we still went into our fund balance by $179,000. No, that was before the 11 cents. Oh, before the 11 cents. Yes, before the 11 cents. With the 11 cents, what did we do? Well, that would be, it was 19950 and I think Donald said that you guys had some pickup taxes of 20500 so you had about 1000 Is that correct? $1,000 growth on a penny? Yeah, twenty thousand something. Or fifty two or something. Okay. But you had a little bit of growth on the penny. Twenty So you tacked eleven cents. You know, went well over you know, of course there's some there was some additional money that was needed. I guess on this car yeah, I can't remember if you guys cut it below what you had last year or not, but anyway you see the hundred seventy nine was before the eleven cents went into that fund, which was gonna bring two hundred and well, about $220,000. Our variance with budget, they did good with the budgets. On the expenditure side, you notice the variance with the final budget was 321000 to the good for the expenditures. So our revenue came in over and our expenditures came in under. But So the bottom line on the county general is the revenue came in more than we budgeted. Yes. And all the department heads uh, tightened their belt and watched their spending. Yeah. And came in under. Yes. And that left us with three hundred and twenty one thousand dollars. To the good on the budget. All right. And so you finished the year in actual, you know, budget aside, actual, you went hundred and seventy nine thousand in the hole. That was before the tax increase. Mm -hmm. That brought in over two hundred and twenty thousand, two hundred and twenty thousand. And then you wound up in a fund balance six fifty one eight seventy, which is about forty thousand to the good. That's your general fund. The next page just basically, and this is on gap basis, but I don't think any of the, the other funds had, except the general had uh, um, had encumbrances on them. So the solid waste, the solid waste was the one that was hurting. Highway was better, debt service fund. You see this one right here on page 23. The 23, next page right, was everybody go to page 23. Exhibit, exhibit C3. You see, of course, we, you, I know you guys talked about the. Now this is a but this is an actual audited number for June 30th, 2011, right? Mm-hmm. Beginning of this fiscal year. General was 872. Well, you can ignore the general fund on this because that's actual gap numbers. It doesn't include the encumbrance. That's why I was wanting you guys to see this one. Okay. Okay. Because the thing is, you see the general fund. It says right here, <clears throat> excess over revenue. If you go by gap without the encumbered fund balance, you, you we we're actually in the black with the general fund. We're actually in surplus, which once you tacked on the encumbrances, then you had the deficit. Okay. But, um, solid waste, you know, we had deficit. We knew that was there. You guys said saying you knew that. Highway fund came $69,000, and of course the general debt service, we had $210,000 more this, this last year of revenue over expenditures thing with I'm caution you on the debt service fund on the variable rate loans you guys are budgeting based on what your rate is now on the interest you guys probably want to yeah, do four percent yeah because right now you're budgeting at a quarter of one percent <throat> on variable rate you probably want to increase that for future you're fine now with good fund balance the rates mm -hmm. are staying low right now um but long term they'll go up yeah I mean it's it's not going to be like a, you know, like one of these arms or anything like that where they're like a homeowner going to blow out of the water. But, you know, 4% is like in that debt study, I showed 5% where you saw where it went down. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 4% would probably be 5% very conservative, 4% fine. That's what I've been doing with my other counties. I'm working with the mayors on they we budget 4% on the variable rate. Right. Um, and that gets paid more. Oh, anybody got now on page? Uh, anybody got any <coughs> questions about page one now? 
So the reason that the school board did not for an increase was that they also had enough operating money that they could. They had that much more. They had that much more. The county started out with a total variance more in the budgeted fund balances. Of the funds that you guys budget, you guys started this fiscal year with $1,791,760 more in the fund balance. But that's the schools included. Every, and the highway, the highway included, highway. Included, mm -hmm. which we can't, uh, yeah, you can't, we can't touch. We can't spend. We can't say what to be spent it for either one mm -hmm. of them. Which, if you add it up, is the majority of it. It's the majority, the great majority of it, yeah. 820 is the schools. About 93% of it. Mm -hmm. and, the high, and 914 in the, in the highway. Correct. Nine eight seven. See, that's that's all up with just a few dollars. Mm -hmm. So we have no control over them. That's you. You typically don't see but, that. And uh, we're one of the few counties that doesn't give the highway department some of the property tax money. Well, isn't that right? The smaller ones, the bigger ones do get. The, you're right. Yeah, the smaller County, ones. Yeah. Rutherford oh yeah. County, they they give the highway fund, you know, property tax money. Yeah. And we let the highway department run off their gas money. Fuel and mineral severance and a little bit, I think, with well, your business tax, you give them a little okay. something. Yeah. Tony, do you have any questions about this? Mm -hmm. Todd? If you look at that <clears throat> variance, 820000 for the general purpose school fund, then I look over here at the school's budget. They've got a big budget for capital outlay. That's three hundred something thousand dollars that they're carrying over this year. Uh, I don't have any any school. I don't think Barbara's here, but I would be willing to suggest anyway that that capital out that capital outlay fund carries over every year, and that's going to be three hundred and fifty. I think it's a three hundred fifty thousand. I can't find it now. I was yeah here it is three hundred eighty thousand. 389000 to the good, their capital outlay. So subtract that from the 820. See, they're planning ahead like we don't sometimes <laughs> for capital outlays. <laughs> That's right. And I'm suggesting that that probably that's is like for our a big debt service fund. Yeah, and that's a that's a good almost half of this 820000 Now, she's not here to answer that question. That's but $300,000 wouldn't build a school no way in the world. No, we did a mm -hmm. with the debt with the when we did the uh, bond rating, we had to do a five year capital improvement plan and we involved them. And that's I don't know what they're doing, but for the next five years, she said she needs some H backs. And that was bas was that basically it for the school for capital? So, right. Yeah, so that I don't know what and that and is. Two, uh, two or three roofs would take a lot yeah. of that money, too. So, I mean, I'm just suggesting that's probably worth almost four hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars of that eight hundred. That's years. right, just trying to account for it. I, you know. All right. How it James, came you got any questions? Huh? How it came under book. Yeah. Yeah. So we I was I took out the the, in the, the variance per you know, pennies on tax level. <laughs> I took out the school. So we collected tax or collected five dollars and thirty one cents in taxes or five cents, I guess five cents. 0.31 in taxes that we didn't need that we didn't spend didn't well didn't spend. you just there's well, an, they'll go ahead Bob. because the <coughs> several of the departments turn money back in right right i mean i and i appreciate a department not to, uh, turning in money back in general? you know yeah the year ended last year yeah they turned money back in. Most of them did, didn't they? had a little bit yeah, left over. but we still dipped into the fund balance. I know we did, but what I'm saying is, I appreciate them doing that yeah. rather than just spending yeah. every last penny they've got in their account. I've been telling them for years that each county official and department head is good about that. If they don't have to have it, they don't spend it. Okay, good point, James. Bill, you got any questions? I've got one last thing, then right. I'll be done, unless you guys get questions. Here's the, he won't go through some recommendations the next year, or this year, I guess you guys are in, fixing to be in. Um, on the first is um, one thing, let me, let me skip down to this one, this 
um, request county made it's towards the bottom. You get one, Tom. Mm -hmm. There you go. On the second one from the bottom, request county management to audit current revenue streams, mineral severance tax, and sales. Bob had spoke with uh, state audit or state revenue about you know the rock quarry operation outside of town, and there was they were setting them up to do mineral severance tax, correct? But then the question was. You know, not only do you mean mineral severance, but typically you do sales tax, business tax. And of course, mineral severance tax all goes to the highway fund. The business tax mainly goes, well, it goes to several funds. And then the sales tax would go to the schools, your general fund, and solid waste fund, which you're having, you're looking at budget issues with. The state, basically, I talked with Mark Pody, and he said the, ba the state revenue, they basically have said, we really appreciate y'all's work on this. We've got a contract with them for TDOT, so any any taxes that they happen to owe us, we'll withhold the payment. But as far as the county's concerned, and this, he said they said that they've already let the county be aware of this. We need to get with our county attorney if there's due taxes, because it didn't. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, Representative Pody also at that time was talking about all what are going back with all the trucks that were running. Each one of them were running by 22 tons, and no one was paying. Uh, the uh, Gail at the um, uh, department up there, road department up there, she hadn't been getting anything. When I talked with the revenue people and got them on it, they said they would take care of it from now on, but it would be every quarterly that they would receive something. Mm -hmm. Gail hadn't called me and said she started receiving anything yet. So when that rock is is taken away down here though and put in Cannon County out there to build the four lane, is it really is there a loophole in the state law about mineral severance that makes it not be taxable when it goes to the same county to be building a road? My understanding when you sever it from the rock. You when sever you sever it from the ground down here, even though you're putting it in the county right. to build a county. new road in the county, it doesn't matter. Yeah, they I, I, I heard one time that there was a, a variance there, that there was a, some of it that was subject to not doing that, but I don't, I don't know, I haven't researched it because I'm not an attorney. And I, mm -hmm. But you guys might want to talk with your county attorney to coordinate with revenue okay. if, if there's literally a mountain of money. <laughs> you know? well, it wouldn't be a mountain of money because it's, uh, the severance tax is not that. Well, I'm not talking about sales tax too, on sales on it. We well, see Jones Brothers now owns that, and they're the ones. Is they're not selling it to anybody now. See, mm -hmm. uh, Wells was selling it to Jones, mm -hmm. and now Wells has sold the whole place to Jones. I understand. Is that right? I don't think it matters if they're selling the rock. If they're pulling it out of the ground. I know, but he's talking about sales tax now. Oh, yeah. He told me Wells told me that he, as soon as they get done with that road, he's shutting this down. What 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 Jones Brothers, unless something has changed within the last three weeks. What Jones Brothers did, they leased a several acres, four or five acres of that rock. Once they get that done, then their contract is up with Wells mm -hmm. at that time. Okay. So that's what they did. And they've gone straight down, as you notice, mm -hmm. when they yeah. come down. Now they're coming around and seems towards the front. But they have gone in the back there. And that was all leased to them by Wells. He still owns them. And, the, and they're going out east side. <clears throat> Right, they're going, building. They're still, uh, they're still in Warren County, but they're fixing to be, they're 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 moving dirt yeah. in Cannon County. Yeah, both of them. Uh, the part of it's going in Warren, part of it's going to Cannon, because that's a low place out there. Yeah, it looks like it's coming out right at Mike's house almost. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, we didn't. Take what it. I was saying was bas basically, you might want to talk with your county attorney. Find out if whether the county's owed any sales tax for any of that. All those taxes, because. Okay. T dot's got those payments, and you know, like Bob said, once they're gone, they're gone. So we, okay. if, if we're owed any money, you might want to, you know, coordinate with Re or have the attorney coordinate the Department of Revenue and T dot. All right. Um, well, what about your other recommendations here? Okay, real quick on the court, continue with the RFP and the competitive bidding of the solid waste hauling. I know you guys are working on that. Um, you guys have uh, the risk pool that you're in for liabilities and worker comp insurance. Um, there's two pools, two risk pools that you guys can be in in the state, and, the, and it allows that if state law says if you're in one of the two risk pools, you don't have to completely bid it. Um, you guys are in the same pool as the as Bedford County, for example, is in. You have a local agent for your pool insurance. They don't. They basically like, Geico it to the state. 
the only difference is they save forty thousand dollars a year while you guys pay that so that's that's something you guys might want to look into getting a quote from the insurance pool directly straight from the pool and bypass the local agent like they've like they've done in bedford and they're using the same pool you guys are using currently um situs base tax audit you know for sales wholesale beer all those things if if um mike have you ever done one of those in this county Do what? a situs base tax audit that's Bedford County found a hundred thousand just like that, and I just got done with Macon County. They found sixty-seven thousand. I went to general fund. Um, it says the health insurance. You might want to compare a bit out the health, employee health insurance. I talked with you last year about mm -hmm. that. The um, Moore County worked with the Moore County mayor, and they saved a couple hundred thousand and got better insurance by doing that. And that's now I'm not talking about just calling an insurance agent and saying give me. Quote, I'm saying literally you throw all the insurance agents the whole you throw them one stick and you let the insurance agents now, are you talking about it. schools and everything they say that kind no of thing? I'm talking with we, the county we're side a county the North County we don't spend nowhere near what you're saying they say How's that? they have a lot better insurance coverage for their but employees they, they say a couple hundred thousand yes and I can show it to you how much did we spend though uh, not near about half of that, I think, best my opinion, or best I remember. And another thing we did, be, we did, we have a local agent, but you got to keep in mind there's only five companies that will insure groups like this, and all five of them bid them, and they were, they were, uh, a bid was seen. Uh, we did see a bid from those companies. The only reason, uh, the only place you could possibly save would be not use a local agent. Well, there's no way, uh, who's going to handle the claims? Who's going to handle all this? There's not enough county employees, just like uh, liability. Uh, they bid that out periodically. Our agent does for us. Uh, we pay the, our agent on liability $8,000 a year. If you hire a full-time insurance clerk that knows what they're doing, you could, you're not going to get you're not going to get one person to do that for eight thousand dollars a year, and they handle all that for us. I don't know how you're going to save any money there because, like I said, our agent bids it for us. They bid it. So the local agent is doing some work for us that other uh, county without that was going straight would have to have a we'd have to have a county employee, employee doing that. I mean, how else would you do it? I mean, you got claims, you got questions, you got all that, and they would they would be coming to my office, and we we don't know anything about insurance. Plus, I don't have anybody to handle. I've got one full time person and one that works two days a week. So I think the eight thousand dollars a year for, especially on the uh, liability and workers' comp, is cheap because it saves us from having to have somebody here doing that. That's all right. Fun. What about the? Uh Budget. Uh, I'm addressing the whole budget committee now. This number three on this, we've already talked about this before. Yeah, we we budgeted in the line. ambulance service out like we do the uh, uh, solid waste and have them their own, you know, seven or eight, ten cents, whatever right. it is. Well, y'all's question was, can the can y'all approve that or not? It's county commission. Yeah, That's that right. was one of the things that we needed research. What's the answer? Oh. Who officially does that? that? Can we adopt that as a, as a budget committee or does that have to go to the commission to do you that? You can recommend it as a budget committee and then they'd have to approve it. Yeah. You, you guys so can, we can do it, it for yeah, next yeah. year or for this year. What's the gain by doing that? I missed the last meeting. What, what can we gain? It, it makes it more accountable where we can see how much they're making or we're making how much the ambulance services the revenue stream how much, is how, how much, much they're actually costing. costing us yeah so taxpayers can see how many cents it costs to run the ambulance service so it won't save anything no it no. Easier it's easier yeah, make, and, and it i asked her right? and it'd make it easier for you wouldn't it Diane? yeah i mean it's easier when you separate things that's right didn't a, Ricky kind of talk in favor of that too when he was yeah here? oh yeah yeah yeah, Ricky. yeah i thought he did there wasn't anybody that didn't like it as far as i know and you suggest doing that too, right, Doug? That's well. That's a recommendation that we make. You know, through when we do a budget, C T A S does. Counties do several that, right? other counties several. do it. And um, I would, like I said, we recommend the same with the Reach program. Typically, this is the only county I've I've ever seen that runs after school through a general fund. Um, here's an I put an example in there of uh, in this sec this second page right here. 
an example of uh, the extended school program in Bedford County. Yeah. Like I said, this you can pull any audit from. Well, I know anyone in Middle Tennessee. I've never, like I said, I've never seen it um, in a general fund. If you put it in a special revenue fund, they get you do a grant anticipation note at the beginning of the year, fiscal year, for you know when they get their grant in, and then they put all the uh, fees that they charge the parents, and mm -hmm. it's a self-sustaining fund. I think for you know for the the public image would be good because when they when they see you know currently you know it's not counting anything out of our tax base because everybody you know it's that's what's out there it's costing out the taxpayers and it's it is tax money I mean money's money but mm -hmm. yeah. but it's still not coming out of our two dollars and whatever cent you know tax rate. So I think that part would be good too. Well, nothing's been used more than reach as a political football throughout right. the last two or three years. Mm -hmm. so there's been more told that's not true about mm -hmm. reach than there right. has. That that is true. And right. uh, I think uh, I think when the when the uh, audit committee's report comes out, you'll see that reach reach is it's had its problems, but. Uh, you know, uh, the circuit clerk's office over in Smith County had a bigger problem than Reeks this past year. Uh, so that can happen anywhere. Uh, Bedford County, they, uh, the mayor over there told me of his own mouth, they uh, stole the guy stole 100000 that guy done this, he told me a two or three. So, I mean, that's going to happen, especially in hard times and when people are bigger than humans. But, uh, I mean, it's the second, put it out yeah. The second page is, is what Bedford County does for their after school program, right? Correct. Okay. But it's run through the school system. And this is this was just this is Perry yeah, County. I, yeah, I know that because I know the director of it over there. This is just an example of an ambulance service fund. Yeah. This is right. one station, two unit like you guys have. Okay. We may be the only county in the state that runs uh, reach through uh county general. Yeah. But the schools wouldn't take it. The schools wouldn't take it. <laughs> What's your next page there, Perry? Oh, no, more Perry County's ambulances, yeah. Yeah, and then um, he had requested about, Kevin had requested about the difference between rural and urban for Medicare ambulance payments. Uh -huh. And I had a couple other counties they want to look into, like you guys are urban compared to Perry County, for example, it's is rural. rural. <laughs> you guys, because you're in the MSA. And they're a lot smaller than us, too. Urban. Mm -hmm. yeah. Warren County is rural and we're urban. Uh, no, no, no. What? Warren County is rural. Correct. And we're urban and there's not anything we can do about it because we're so close to Murfreesboro. Correct. And Smith County is urban, considered urban, for this Medicare purposes. But um, Ricky up in, uh, what's his name up in Smith County? The manual director. Ricky. Slack. Slack. He and I were looking, when I had signed up, when I signed to Smith County, we, we looked at this to try to do what was called a Goldsmith modification with Medicare to let them be considered rural for Medicare reimbursement purposes instead of urban. And this right here is coming from Medicare. You can see it when we saw that it was going to only be a few thousand dollar difference between urban and rural in the billing, we, we dropped it. It was too much red tape and we checked with Medicare. They said they were not even aware of the ones we talked, they weren't even aware if anybody had ever even applied for the modification waiver because uh, it, it just now if you could go to super rule you could see that would be a big increase but there's no way you know we we qualify the difference that. between smith county and cannon county though is there's probably a lot higher percentage of transfers to uh, nashville mm -hmm. in this county than there is in smith Mount county because they have carthage general and they have smith county memorial they have two hospitals so there's probably a lot more long distance transports mm -hmm. for, there's the, all for the mileage yeah. So there may be, I mean, it may be worth at least putting in for it. I mean, a, a modification. I mean, yeah. it may be more than two or $3,000. Okay. Any other questions, anybody? For those? One last thing, okay. and I'll, the, uh, you guys went through ratio, appraisal ratio this year, yeah. your reappraisal's next. Did, Mike, did you tell them about the ratio with what the state came back? next year. The ratios this year, what you guys just got what the ratio was. The ratio study. The ratio study. Yeah, the doll, doll talked about it last, last week. Yeah. Right. And where it came in. Right. Okay, because you guys might want to, you were over, what is it, over market? One. One, one, wasn't it? One point oh seven. Okay, so that was your over 
the, the market, what it says, your appraisers are over market value. That happened in DeKalb and Wilson, slightly in Wilson. What that is is historically your appraisals have always gone up on your tax base. Well, this year, according to this ratio, it, it went down in By the market. By 1%. So what happens is when they come in, all things held constant, what you see is the rates, the certified tax rate, once you do, because reappraisal is revenue well, neutral. So the tax rate will actually go up. Yeah, to bring in the same to bring, to bring in the same dollar. So you can see a tax increase next year, not this coming, not this coming well, fiscal, not but the next. Well, not a dollar increase, though. No, but you'll see. You very well see. But it could, you know, it, within the next 12 months, that could change. And when you're just within one percent, I mean, it's good. But I don't call. It, I'd rather not call it a tax increase because really it is. If the rate's 242 now and the, and the appraisal goes down, and you have to shoot it up to 255. If your appraisal goes down. If it goes down, that's what I'm saying. Then then that's not a tax increase. That brings in the same amount of money. The county. Does that happened the last time we yeah. reappraised though. Yeah. A lot of uh, a double wide mobile homes. Yeah, they jacked up a lot, and then some uh, better houses out in the county went down. Yeah. The last appraisal. I Even just, though the tax rate goes up, the amount of money coming in stays the same. That's right. It's, like I said, they had a Bob went and attended. They had a class about that because there will be if you have a if you have a nice home, there is a potential you'll see an increase in what you pay. Because once again, this is an average yeah. of it. So any other questions for for Doug? Mike, Mike, you got any? Thank you. Thanks. I appreciate that. No problem. Some good information. And next, we'll uh, do the library next. Y'all got the uh, extension service outnumbered, so we'll. What page is that on? That's on page 22. 22? Alright. That is good. I've got to do that for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm about buying that up by six. Well, I don't know. That's one page three. That's right. Alright. We've got Angie here. Uh, there's a library board chairman. Chair. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> we're here to uh, explain the increases in our request. Um, basically, our library director, Rita Allen, runs an extremely tight ship. So the uh, increase that you're seeing in our request is almost entirely for staff. We are kind of a, a victim of our own success. The library is enormously popular, heavily used. Uh, it's open 48 hours a week here in Woodbury, plus an additional 18 to 21 hours um, in Auburn Town. So we, we have a lot of staff hours to cover. Um, and at this point, we are running at basically unsafe staffing levels. Um, also probably illegal. Um, our director is paid for 32 hours a week, um, but she is, is uh, um, she doesn't have enough staff for her to actually work those hours. So anyway, we desperately need more staff. Um, the very least that we think we can get by with is two half-time people. And that is uh, re reflected there in the expenses, line 103, staff salaries. That is two half-time people added on, plus another $1,012 to cover people to substitute 
when staff is sick or, or takes their uh, annual leave. Um, the reason, one reason that I'm speaking tonight is instead of Ms. Allen is that we really think it's essential to pay her an, an additional amount. We are requesting $1,000 for a raise for her. Um, as I said, she, she works incredibly hard and is now managing this uh, $1.2 million building project um, that has just gotten underway as well. So she's, she's doing uh, work outside the normal scope of the library director's um, job description. And $1,000 is actually a token. We, we, we had a long conversation about what was the least amount that um, we thought was workable. Um, we would really like to see something more in line with what other department heads get. Uh, she is essentially a department head, but the law looks at it a little differently, and so she's not compensated in the same way, although she works many more hours than many of them do. But anyway, I, I'm off on a tangent there. <laughs> um, there have been other cuts, so uh, we, we believe that we can operate with that additional staffing plus um, a $6,046 increase uh, for operating cost. Of course, all of that's not counting on when we turn in. Yeah. Well, that's, we're kind of um, putting that in a, a different category here. I think that that number actually does reflect the separation between our other income and county. This, uh, the line out of 316 contributions. Right. The contributions line is to fund the other lines and you have to, if you look at the um, expenses on the budget proposal, the difference there, the 176664. Yes. If you take out the 19445 from that, actually we're a asking to operate at 157219. It it's an odd thing, but you have to enter it sort of enter it <coughs> twice in order to make mm -hmm. the budget balance. And the contribution balance. line item is going from 133 to 194. Correct. Okay, and you're holding the postage the same. Yes. Maintenance grants the same. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, data processing, you got to increase right there on data processing supplies. Mm, what's One, the line number on that? Uh, four, four, four eleven. eleven. Oh, four eleven is computers. Yeah, that's down actually. Down from 5,700 this year to 4,600. Okay. That's a, that's a decrease. And that's due to uh, a change in the way the regional library system is offering services to us. Okay, they're offering us more. Well, we're going for a new um, consortium automation system that will give us a better automation system, but for less money sort of joining forces with other counties. Okay. Yeah, it was 5,700 is what we approved right. last year, and right. you didn't spend but 25 here, estimated. So far. You're estimated to spend 2,500, so up to this point. Yes, and there will be some bigger expenses There'll coming out more, of that before the end of But it's not going to be 5,700 is what you're saying. It's not going to be 5,700. So um, that's why you pulled it down to, to 46. Right, right, because we've gotten this good deal. Okay. Also, um, because we were one of those first 25 libraries, I think I told you about that, mm -hmm. that signed up for this thing, we got it at half price. 
because I raced over to get Bill's signature really, really fast that day, and we made it in the first two hours of the offering and saved $900 that way. That's good. Continuing on down, instructional materials, 1500 That's programming. That's largely kids' programming, but not exclusively kids' programming. Okay, and you've lowered it from last year's request, right? Right. In order to <coughs> make... Uh, the programming money, we only spend what we collect ourselves on that. This year, we're spending $810. We hope to be able to get 2000 to spend. We did not. So we're spending 810 Okay. okay. And then library books, 10000 Office supplies, 2500 uh, utilities, 9000 That's one question now. Will that go up when you get a bigger building? That's a really good question. We don't know the answer yet. Um, we are going to be able to do a number of things to greatly increase the energy efficiency. And we just don't know yet uh, where, how the balance will settle out. We are adding more space, but also replacing windows and um, putting in a radiant barrier in the roof area. Okay. No. So I'm hoping bills will be less. <laughs> that would be great. Okay. And who knows what the weather will be next year. Exactly. That's right. Other supplies, 500, uh, 11, 12 grant that you got. You didn't, uh, the, it goes down this year. Right. It, we finished that big laptop lab computer grant that okay. totally finished during 2012 so we're done with that the only thing you'll see there is I'll be asking for a thousand dollar grant a t what they call a technology grant for two more computers okay. to replace older computers and then line item the last one 719 and you're asking for a thousand that's the same as last year right all right Anybody got any questions for Rita or Angie? Tony? Mm -hmm. Todd? Bill? James? I certainly appreciate the way y'all come to these meetings, though, when you do, you answer all of our questions and you do it in a in a polite and a business-like manner, and it just, uh, it, I appreciate it. I'd and y'all, like you know, tried, like you say, you tried to do uh, things like getting that first two hours of that grant and you got it and that that's that's what we want somebody that works for the county but is not a, a slacker <laughs> <laughs> slacker was never mentioned in relation to Rita Allen I assure you I want to point out that other members of the uh, Board of Trustees are here tonight Bill Bryce and Regina Reed and Peggy Tate are here as, as well um, and, and we try to get as many of the Board of Trustees here as we can each year so that we can help you have confidence that we're all working with everything that the rest of the county is doing to uh, make it the best thing we can. And it's being everybody. utilized. That's, that's the good thing about it, too. We're really and excited. People that utilize the library are less likely, I think, to be utilizing the jail. <laughs> <laughs> Any, any interesting if somebody studies that. thank y'all thank you all thank you. thank you regina and, and bill all, all y'all thank y'all coming mm -hmm. extension is here and we got heath and bruce and carla all three We've got an excellent extension. 25. 25? Office and think that's right. Thank you. Four page. 25, I think. Yes, 25. Where does actually win? Well, I appreciate you saying that, Mark. I sort of 
I sort of think we have one of the well, best ones in the state. Well, if you could make it rain everywhere, well, I'd be more <laughs> pleased with it. Well, it seemed like it's raining everywhere except Reedham. Well, it didn't rain. Uh, I heard it didn't rain out at uh, Hollow Springs, one, one big strip out there that missed it, too. Well, Harold Duggan is looking for some whoever's in his neighborhood that's not living right. Mm. He's going to ask them to move. <laughs> that's what he told me today. <laughs> All right, it's on page 23 of the revised one, isn't it? Yeah. Don't have one. I don't have one. Oh, let's see. She's got a revised one. Come on. Okay. She said 23. What? I'm talking to myself. All right, salary supplements. As everybody knows, most of y'all salary comes from the University of Tennessee. Yes. And we, oh, we supplement that. And. Uh, the total of them is forty-seven two twenty-five. Any com? Any explanation? No, as all of you know, that we we lost our ten cent program assistant this last year, and that was Miss Erin Nichols, and uh, uh, we we were fortunate enough to supplement her a little bit uh, to keep things going, so that. Uh, uh, we lost that position, but um, as, along with us, of course, our secretary is Miss Kim Smithson. That goes on there with us. Um, the state um, provided all state employees a three percent uh, increase, and that's another um, struggle for us because we're you know when, when they when they present that, uh, it's up to us to try to to keep our three percent going so we don't get get behind. With our UT match, um, in the mark, is there anything else in particular that? No, that's divided between. Does the secretary's salary come completely from the county? No, it's everybody. A, it's a match everybody, it's a match as well. That, that was my only question. Everyone in office match, and even the equipment that we purchase, uh, we're fortunate that we can do a cost share with UT. The county um, uh, uh, submits a, a, a small percent. And then UT matches that, and uh, we think that's a that's a really good win-win for everybody as well. So we're able to buy computers, uh, risk graphs, and a lot of stuff that we use for our mass mailings and communications in office. All right, and then line item two ninety nine. What is that? The uh, that's just all their benefits. All their benefits. Right. Yeah, they just, we just pay UT and we just. Pay you, it goes straight to UT. Okay. Communication three thousand dollars. That's the same as last year. Maintenance and repair on the building thirty five hundred. Same, same. same and then office supplies one thousand. And that's the same as last year. And you're requesting a your bottom line is gonna be less than last year, correct? Correct. Because you're pulling out. We lost the position. You lost that position. We're not okay. Everybody clear on that? Now your um, the part that's coming from UT is going to have a three percent increase, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And, and that's again, that's one of those deals we really have no no control on. It's just sort of something well, the governor you're passed glad along. To get it, yeah. There's other people that live in this county that work for the state of Tennessee too. You know, highway department. Absolutely. Uh, schools don't they got? Yeah, all state. Yeah, all state state employees. To my understanding, across the board, received that three okay. percent. All right. Any questions? And then on on our part, our part is the same thing, same way as with the the other offices. I mean, we got we we have we're mandated to match whatever. State of Tennessee is doing correct or incorrect? Uh, not with our supplement. We're not mandated to, are we? Well, I don't think so. uh, we're not mandated to match the three percent on the supplement, but you would like for us to. Yes, uh, okay. and, and, the, <laughs> and I think the the the, the uh, understanding or the uh, whatever the agreement was way back when okay. was the county has a, a certain percentage to try to maintain, and our county is twenty two percent. Uh, I think the highest one across the state is 50 percent, and that's my primarily our counties like she um, Shelby, Davidson, and Williamson. 
Uh, so in Canyon County, the, the understanding or the agreement they have with UT is to maintain a 22 percent okay. cost share. What are we at right now? Do you uh, know? We're right at 21 and a half. 21 and a half. Okay. So last year we matched the the UT's whatever state raise was. Uh, last year we were we did not receive a state raise. Yeah. Because that. Okay, the state, okay, there's, there was no state raise. No. Okay, I'm with you. And in UT, at times, they will implement a, a, a merit increase. And uh, we were, everyone in the staff was fortunate to receive that uh, merit increase, and that was at half percent that we fell behind last year. Uh, so with, with this year, with the state, with another third percent, that's just, we sort of lagged, you know, we're, we're, we're now, behind. Carla spent a, a year and a half, or two years. A year and a half. In, in Nashville. Seemed like longer than that. Down, down, <laughs> at, <laughs> down at Ellington. For uh, me too. <laughs> explain to the, to the committee, we've got some new members here, Carla, what you do and what you did down there too. Oh, well here I'm the Family and Consumer Sciences agent which is the new name for home economics or the home agent. So I still, depending you know, on the person, I sometimes I'll call myself the home agent. So we're all about education. So I do education in the areas of family consumer sciences, which would be like personal finance, health and safety, food preparation, food safety. Think of home economics classes in school, but I do it for the general public. A big push right now is self-management uh, of chronic conditions, diabetes, um, arthritis, all of the, so I do a lot of education in that kind of thing. I'm also into wellness, as, as James and I ran the last 5K <laughs> <coughs> last weekend. Um, so I'm involved in the health council and uh, things like that. Also, uh, community. We're all involved in community development. You know, we were all active in the good old days and uh, sustainable Tennessee efforts. So <coughs> that's what I do here in the county, just, you know, just the top of the <laughs> what comes to mind. Um, but in Nashville, I had an interim position uh, for a year and a half. That was, if you remember, when the bottom dropped out. So I kind of, they told me it would be three to six months. And I kind of got, they, there was a hiring freeze. So I kind of got trapped up there, which was all right. I enjoyed the position, but it was kind of a middle management position. Um, the central region has 31 counties in Middle Tennessee. So I was the Family Consumer Sciences program leader interim for an, uh, interim uh, for a year and a half helping agents in the county with their county programming. So I was kind of middle management because our office is in Knoxville, I mean, I'm sorry, in Nashville that reports to Knoxville. And the co-parenting you do. Oh yes, yes. I am doing a lot more co-parenting, uh, which is the, uh, court-mandated parenting education class for uh, for parents who have minor children uh, they're required to take four hours of parenting which is a fabulous class I mean you can talk to Judge Melton um, and I also have have done some court-ordered parenting as well uh, for DCS so um, you know in, involved in schools and family and and just parenting yes and relationships is kind of a what we're working on now so the state this uh, our state office uh, provides a lot of in-service for all of us to keep us up to date in, in uh, whatever's going on and uh, priorities in our state and our divorce rate is one of the highest in the country so that is why all the uh, extension agents who choose to be trained to do this court ordered parenting uh, can do that so yes that's something else I do there's now do y'all charge for these classes or are they just a service that y'all offer to the county right these the court ordered parenting classes we are required to charge for so but the other classes it's fifty dollars uh, no like the a lot of uh, mine are uh, I can get grants through the uh, Center for Disease Control uh, through Knoxville mm -hmm. like the living well with chronic conditions and the arthritis and the um, uh, diabetes class I have grants uh, to pay for the materials I usually give them a notebook and uh, you know for notes and and uh, a book comes with it so it's a really beneficial class I mean I each week they make an action plan and it's really I guess we're all we've done this we deserve our merit increases because we've done this long enough so we really feel like um, 
when you're really making a difference in an individual's life, that's what we're looking for now. I mean, not necessarily turning in the highest numbers at, at a 4-H event or something, but when you have a kid that says, I have my job as a trainer at Verizon Wireless because of 4-H public speaking, that's when you just get all warm and fuzzy. So, I mean, it, it's true. I mean, and Esther Covey, I can't think of her married name, but she actually, she told me that. You know, she said, I know I have my job because of that. Um, she used to work to co-op at them. Yes, Lacey, Lacey Taylor, and I can't think of her married name either, but she was one of our big public speakers in 4-H, and you know, she's, she's been on the national news as a parent talking about her, her son, yes. So she was what I saw her at the good old days. And she was the one that told me, she said, I remember I was in public speaking in 4-H, so anyway. Um, but those, the Living Well with Chronic Conditions course, you know, there's six weeks. We meet once a week. Um, I, I'll stop talking in a minute, but, you know, you got me started. So um, They're glad for you to be you the asked, host. <laughs> yes. So um, they're, they're once a week for six weeks. And, um, you know, at the end of those six weeks, when those people really, you know, make changes in their life to help manage their self, their, their chronic condition, whatever it is, whether they have started to take their medication as directed or whether they have exercised more or whether they're eating better just because of that course. I mean, it's really made a difference in their life and that's that's what we're shooting for. And that makes a difference in the county too. It does. Oh, yes. County, state, country, when they are self-managing these chronic conditions, it's a big, it's a, it could have a big impact. Hey, <laughs> tell us about the 4-H. You want to follow that? Uh, <laughs> Just if I work myself up to it. Um, well, for, I've, I've got the best job in the world um, and probably the easiest one to relate to everybody else because I'm sure that you were all kids in 4-H once upon a time. But um, the basis of, of my program, we uh, are real fortunate here in Cannon County and uh, words cannot express how fortunate that we are that we have a good working relationship with the school system. So we go into the school system once a month while school is in session, um, with the exception of um, September and December, and do an hour-long 4-H club meeting where we elect officers to try to give them some leadership opportunities, uh, as well as um, uh, Carla mentioned the public speaking, we do that, uh, do demonstration contests, communication type deals. Uh, with our older kids, uh, we do a lot of uh, workforce preparation programming. Um, quite frankly, the only basis for that is, is I got aggravated one day when I asked a couple of eighth graders what they wanted to do for a living, and they looked at me and said they wanted to be quarterback of the Tennessee Titans. Um, and, and we're serious in that. So, um, you know, spend a lot of time um, working with those programs. Um, in addition to that, yes, uh, we do go to camp, and uh, Commissioner um, Stats will give me some good advice that I will take Tuesday morning uh, to 4-H camp with me, but um, uh, have all those opportunities available. Uh, we um, teach kids, you know, by the hands-on methods such as judging teams. Uh, we have livestock judging. Uh, we even have an outdoor meat cookery team uh, where we cook. Um, four kids get together and uh, grill chicken, lamb, beef, and uh, pork. Um, so we do that. Um, all the animal shows, um, sheep, uh, horse, cattle, um, goat, and used to have a few 4 acres showing dog. Um, but, uh, you know, work with all those kids and uh, just uh, try to build those life skills that will, you know, turn them into adults that we can all be, all be proud of. Um, yes, yes, um, very proud and had another and couldn't have done it without the help of uh, Farm Bureau and Mr. Mark, but uh, every year, um, the other part that we try to get across from kids is that their food does not come from Walmart. There is actually a live person or an animal or, you know, a field of corn or beans or something, you know, beyond um, Walmart uh, where they go get their food. So uh, every year one of my stops when I go through all the schools is uh, to teach, try to teach kids about agriculture and then we partner with Farm Bureau and have all the fourth graders down um, to the fairgrounds and, um, and have, um, we call it 4-H on the farm 
and they learn about um, different types of um, agriculture. We take them down to the river, um, show them all about aquatic life. Um, of course, we have our 4 H'ers who show uh, livestock. I know uh, we had some 4 um, H'ers who show goats, sheep, and, um, and Bruce's son brought his 4-H uh, four um, four bulls um, down to show the kids. And um, uh, that afternoon, we, uh, we worked them a little bit this year. That was a little different, but uh, tried to teach them, you know, uh, had a haystacking contest for them. Uh, didn't know how that was going to go, but they acted like they loved it. Okay. Um, we uh, had some things, you know, uh, a mature cow drank, you know, roughly 30 gallons of water a day. Here's a big tub, here's a little tub, you know, water this cow. Um, so the kids got wet and muddy and made a big mess, so they enjoyed it, and, uh, and I did too. And so every year, all the fourth graders in the county have an opportunity to come to the fairgrounds and, and see them. And they had the beekeeper there this year. They were they were really enthused with the beekeeper. Oh, he was he was an awesome, awesome. We had uh, about eight different had, stops, four in the morning and or five in the morning and five seven, in the afternoon. Seven, seven in the morning. Seven in the morning, seven, seven, in, the morning, afternoon, seven yes. in the afternoon. So we were running through mm -hmm. the mill. Yeah, and we, we it was a it was a big day and it was our ninth. Ninth annual. Eighth or ninth. So yeah. we're we're tickled to that. You know, the purpose of the University of Tennessee Extension is to provide research-based information to our clientele and uh, you know I'm fortunate to have a great staff to work with and I'm also fortunate that I follow somebody like Clayton Glenn. He had uh, some deep roots here that instilled a lot of practices that ha has been tremendous and have been, have been easy to follow someone like that. Um, my day, uh, a, a pretty typical day yesterday was uh, I'll be out at uh, Keith Bowman's uh, helping him on selecting his bulls and giving him advice on his replacement heifers. Uh, come to town and identify a bug for a gentleman here that was uh, eating this, uh, eating them out of house and home and then show up at the extension office that night doing BQAs. Uh, we do farm family, farm family schools, uh, demonstration plots, uh, do a lot with master beef to, to give the producer the opportunity to to get in to, to increase their cost share on ag enhancement. Um, been really busy the last few years on ag enhancement, trying to get. BQA stands for Beef Quality Assurance, and uh, train they do training for it to make sure that the product that we the live product that we put into the marketplace and into the food line is not got any blemishes that, that we can avoid. Try to try to, to try to make our, our beef safer. That's right. Make it safer, and then more cuts that don't have better. to be trimmed out and thrown away. And and and, and seem like you the know, we've uh, done ag a lot enhancement on that. money that comes from the state of Tennessee. A few years ago, the governor had a task force that identified that uh, at that time beef cattle was the number one uh, agricultural product in Tennessee, and so they targeted first beef cattle, what they could do to improve that and they put out money that they would match if you would say build a barn to put your hay in so you wouldn't uh, that the moisture and the rain would not uh, ruin it during the year and there's been several hay barns built in this county and then there's been uh, handling equipment bought with that matching money too the producer has to at the mo at the least 75 percent 75 percent that the producer has to put up, and then they, <coughs> after you spent the money, they will enhance. They they, they encourage you. That that's a 25 percent encouragement. Uh, Jeff Reed, the local builder supply here, told me that you know that was a really big help for him when the housing bubble burst. That these barns were being built, and people were buying lumber for that, and it helped him get across. Uh, okay. Uh, offset, the house. offset the housing. And the bit. same thing on, on the co-op. Yeah, the co-op was helped by it our too. Our fertilize and our chemicals and, and you know it, it was depressed and and you know the co-op they they did remarkable business on just handling facilities and and gates and crowds and stuff they were selling. So it, it's been very implement, uh, instrumental 
and, and uh, improving Brooke, the quality. And, and that doesn't wide. come from the University of Tennessee, but they, mm -hmm. they help with all that mm -hmm. because the, the Tennessee Department of Agriculture and University of Tennessee work together really well. And uh, agriculture is still on the state seal, I believe. Yeah, yeah, there it is, still yeah. on the state seal. And it, it's one of the biggest. A for our farmers market. Yeah, that's right. A building for the farmers market. So, as you can tell, our extension office, we're hands on, we're active, we're out there with the public. All of us are active in, in different uh, community activities. I'm in, in Woodbury Lions Club, real active. Uh, and, I, you know, I, Carla said that about the, uh, the home agent. You know, a lot of times folks will call and they'll say, County Agent's Office. And uh, it goes back to uh, uh, Hank Kimball and Green Acres, and you know, <laughs> and, and you, you get you get sort of a, a warm fuzzy feeling during that little point too. But you know, my thoughts are it doesn't matter, you know, what they call the office. The important thing they're calling the office, and, and the folks in Kenny County using us, and we do appreciate y'all's support. I know I've got the university. To, I've got to find and break down and fill up and send off a soil sample to find out why I can't. My beans won't, I can't get any seeds to come up in my dirt for whatever reason. <laughs> now I can grow plants, but I can't get seeds to come up. I know, that's something we can definitely help you with. But I've got the sample, I've got the box to do it, it's just a matter of doing it. All right. And they work together well, too. Any other comments on your budget proposal? No, I mean, it, it's if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Does Heath and, and Bruce go join us at the 5K and next year? <laughs> <laughs> we, we may walk it. Yeah. Well, that's what I did. There you go. I, I left Diane out. Diane was in 5K, too. I'm sorry, Diane. <laughs> <laughs> Veterans. <clears throat> yeah. We're ready for the veterans next. Well, Page of them. Same page. Yeah, same kind of yeah. right. I don't put know. together Bottom. a little packet here, kind of all this stuff. Okay. Things. Go ahead, Penny. Oh, <laughs> um, of course, attachment one is, is what I've requested for the, the veterans budget, the veterans office. Um, I did ask for a pay increase or salary, which I probably never see, but <laughs> hey, it doesn't hurt, right? So, and I had no idea what, what to ask for or whatever, but. And then communication, you need a little bit of increase there. Yeah, let me see where we are. Uh, that's Let's line 307. What I have down there. What I have last year, I don't have the comparison. Just a minute. 1400, I think, was last year. Oh, was it all right? Am I wrong? It's not a pay, and it's not an increase. <coughs> yes. Here it is, here it is, yeah, 14. That's the same. Communication is the same. Then the postal increase is $10 on you know, okay, more yeah. claims I send in. Um, and then travel and training, I, it, it was a decrease because I kind of backed up and not attended as many training days as okay. I can. So it's just, and the, and the guy that was giving training, he's no longer there, so I don't, you know. And after you've been trained, it's, you know, it lasts longer than one year. Oh, yeah. But see, I get, I get training, like, for three days with the Tennessee Department of Veteran Affairs. Okay. And that's probably why, I'm, because my training is high because of that, because I stay up in a okay. hotel, whatever. And then we get quarterly training, too, and then I was going over to Cookville to get additional training. Uh, the guy over there is very knowledgeable. Very knowledgeable. Okay, and 465 was last year's office supplies, and you're asking for 600. Right. Um, 
lot of it's the, the ink cartridges. That's quite a bit right there. And then I, I don't know when I was here last year if I told you that I got a new computer. Y'all mm -hmm. helped me get a new computer. And that's wonderful. I mean, it's, it's really nice. <laughs> and uh, then I to antivirus security. I, that one year, 80, that was a little high. I had not, you know, really any idea how much it was going to be, but it, it came down quite a bit. And you got all your training here broken down by lodging, mileage, mm -hmm. and that, everything. Yeah, that's for the, the food. Yeah. that's one training that's uh, about two nights and three days, whatever. Yeah. And I am still accredited. You know, I, I attend the training, take a test, and then I have to work so many hours and I'm meeting that requirement, so I'm, you know, I'm accredited, so. Okay. Um, let's see. So your increases, you have uh, on the second page, third page right here, you uh, put out what uh, what it was going to be going for. Now, attachment number three. Okay. This is what I get from the state, it, and it, there's a thing on the back if you want to. It's by county, and it it basically tells us. Um, how many veterans, and this is as of two, 2009, but then the, it shows how much monetary awards is for 2010 to 2011. Uh, and basically that's, uh, we've got about 113, 1100, a little over 1100 veterans. And I haven't even skimmed. I mean, I'm, I think maybe I'm working with 200 or whatever that I've seen. So, uh, and of course, the money amount for that's one million three hundred eighty-two thousand seven hundred seven dollars, and that's just what the state reports. But a little bit further down, I kind of keep track of all the claims that come in and how much money and their their monthly uh, pay they get. So back pay monies this year was over eighty-one thousand, and then uh, monthly monies is over eleven eleven hundred dollars. So. Or eleven thousand. So, any questions about the Veterans Service Office, Tony? Mm -hmm. Todd? No, sir. Bill? Mm -hmm. Nope. Uh, we should appreciate our veterans uh, and then Memorial Day this coming weekend you know people oh, I'm afraid too many people just think about a holiday mm -hmm. from working and and they're gonna go have a party and Memorial Day was started to decorate the graves of the soldiers that had, had given their lives for our country started started after the Civil War and then Later, when it became a big holiday, it was after World War One and World War Two, and then when they make it a federal holiday, it seems to get lost, and the mean the meaning of it becomes lost. Mm -hmm. We got owe a lot to our veterans. If uh, you've never been to the Veterans Day uh, activities at the high school, you really need to go. Mm -hmm. Especially this year, they're going to have there's a, a team out of Nashville, I think that's going to do a flag presentation and they did it for the American Legion I think it must have been February yeah, or something and this one guy ago, three months ago maybe yeah something like that but I mean this, great. I don't know how to explain it but <laughs> they show all the different flags from you know beginning and right up to the flag we have from today pre Betsy Ross yeah there was a name for each one of the flags the, old, the one that we have now is Old Glory that's the one that that is in today's time but we've had them all through there. It was really good. But this one individual talks, and I don't, I don't know how we can remember all that stuff, but it's just, I mean, I was, I you didn't know. remember your general orders. Huh? <laughs> your general orders when you were in the Air Force, right? General. Repetition, repetition. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's <how they laughs> but that's still too much information, because I bet you talked a half an hour and didn't shout, I mean, didn't say, you know, skip the beat and then didn't, you know, he just went out. It was it it was interesting. So if y'all ain't doing yes, that, sometime. 
Uh, and I'm glad our high school does have a veterans' yes, day. Yes, I've been impressed since I've been here. That's the first time I went last year. Yeah. Great. No, it's, it's a great day. Yeah. And this weekend in Murfreesboro, the Healing Fields. That's right. Um, most of the time I'm out of town on this weekend, but I'm here. But uh, actually, I'll help put flags out Saturday morning. But I was there for the closing ceremony a few years ago, and very, very moving. And of course, they got an opening ceremony Saturday, and then a closing Saturday ceremony Monday at five. But it's it's something else. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, that's you know. With, uh, and of course, I'd like to just to mention the American Legion. We've been together, I think, going on three years, and you know we're earning money and getting some funds. So if we, you know, help the help the youth and help veterans as, as much as we can, but you know it's taken us a. <clears throat> Did uh, and y'all the American Legion sponsors a boys state representative every yes. year. Three boys. And uh, they're there now. They're yeah. there now. Yeah, yeah they'll be back. I on. went. I was the representative when I was in high school, and that's that was a very good uh, week. And uh, American Legion did a good job. Yeah. They still do it up at Tennessee Tech, Cookville. Yes. The boys. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Right. Girl code name. Is that where they go? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm glad we have American Legion post here in the county now. That's good. And uh, they'll work with you. The, and they do. <laughs> they do all And our time. veterans, you know, they'll tell you how many are passing away, from, especially from World War II. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of them are already gone, but uh, my wife's father, he was a uh, Korean War veteran, and he passed away in December, and a lot of them are yes, yes, are passing away too, and we, we, we're losing, you know, you should sit down with a veteran like that and, and ask them a few questions before it's, it's too late to ask them. I mean, there's a lot of them that'll just come in my office, and I've learned so much from, I mean, I don't, didn't know much about World War II and Korea, you know, barely Vietnam, but I am getting a lot more Viet <clears throat> Vietnam veterans coming in. I had three this week, new ones, so, and they're just continuing to call, and so. Any other comments or questions for Penny? No. Thank you very much, Penny. We'll certainly take that into consideration. And well, thank you, and we thank appreciate you for the me. job that you do. Well, I appreciate it, and thank you for letting me do it. Because I mean, the county—you know—you don't have to have a veteran service officer, but like I tell the veterans, even if it's not me, the office needs to be filled. You know, it. it uh, uh, we all. You're so appreciative. That's right. That's exactly right. All right. Yes, sir. The commission budget. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Thank you for the. Yes. That's the shortest budget in the whole list, Bob. Yeah, but yeah. I've just i just about doubled it though. <laughs> <laughs> that's up there. Of course, that's. All right. You know how it is when you're trying to sell a cow. You yeah, ask it a little bit. Mm -hmm. we'll Page 12. I'm looking at this one. Go ahead, Bob. One of the things, it's pretty bad when, when the commission as a whole, we're trying to make sure that we save money, that the commission was the uh, only one that went over their budget come mid-year. Uh, but that is, too, because of the fact <coughs> that we have now gone to 12 times a year that we meet. Um, we are presenting a lot and there's a need for an attorney to be able to do that. Um, what I've done is when I came in, I had went to uh, the one of the, um, uh, not CTAS, but the Tennessee's uh, training for commissioners and everything, and it, and it shows to where um, there's a lot of of um, opportunities to be able to go to school so we know how to operate correctly. And so that in-service training uh, is estimated in 2011 and 12 at 200, and I've asked for 800. Uh, I'm trying to push the other commissioners to, to go to learn more. Um, I don't know exactly, most of the stuff that the state puts on is free, although the places they put it on are not, you know, where you have to put up. Um, 
when we voted to um, meet 12 times a year, there was about seven, seven commissioners said we don't want any pay for it. They just wanted to be able to make sure they could get stuff done. I don't know how, looking at it now, how we ever got everything done four times a year because we're, we're covered up each meeting. However, the state law says that every time that a commission meets, we got to be paid for it. So the only way that we can keep our promise to them, uh, to the people when we said that, is to take $25 a meeting. And then that $25 a meeting, um, uh, it equals out to um, $250 a meeting times 12. That is three thousand dollars, and this. Um, and you have sometimes a special it's a, it, meeting. Part, and we have a special meeting. This was estimated that they had here at four thousand. I left it the same because it take three thousand dollars to be able to make us get paid every twenty twenty five dollars every meeting. Um, the next one is something that I don't have anything to do with. You know, Social Security. I couldn't tell anything there. That's I left just taken out of the other, yeah. Yeah, and I left everything and the same. Medicare is the same. That's just what's what it actually. When you get your check, it's it's listed. Though. Right. Uh, one of the things is too, Mark, on that is that uh, by us meeting that twelve times a year, it goes uh, to um, three hundred dollars more than what they're actually paying us now. We get fifty dollars four times a year. You know, on we the court, the and the, and the committee uh, meetings are uh, not just a budget. If, if really and truly, they can ask for any of the committee meetings to be paid. I, I, somebody told me one time. I'm not sure that if the county executive calls a meeting, he is supposed to get paid. I'm not sure if that's. That's probably that's probably true. We're the only one of the ones that don't use well, money. Rutherford County. Uh, yeah, they they uh, gorge They probably gave two hundred dollars a meeting or something. Yeah, yeah, they get more than that. I think I'm telling you, it's 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 pitiful what they get. We're not like that. We're we're here for service, but the state says that we have to be paid every time. So uh, you're asking for an increase on three thirty one legal services there because we've been using the county attorney more. Right, and I'm not sure if this is the right place. But I, I need to tell you that we need to be able to have the legal services here now because there's questions that we have got ourselves in trouble for because we never asked them legally before we did it and we've had to come back and redo uh, um, different resolutions and stuff like that. And, and this is something that I don't know if it's in the place to do it, Mark, you can tell me whether or not. But I plan to ask the commission to find a lawyer that lives in town lives in County County. Mike has now moved over to Warren County. That's where he lives and works in DeKalb County. Mm -hmm. I can't hardly get him here. And we need to be able to have somebody, and I think probably just like, he gets $125 an hour. And I figured up that uh, uh, that 12 times $125 is 1500 And then I doubled that because that's only for one hour. I don't even know if he charges coming to us and going home or if he just charges while he's here. But, but I will be asking the, uh, the, the commission at the, uh, at the meeting to be able to look at the possibility of finding us another attorney. And it's nothing against Mike, but it is logistics and time. You know, uh, if we have somebody that's here, and I don't know who it would be, you know, really. Okay. And next one is court cost recording and legal notices. We have no. been putting in the uh, courier every two times a month now. Yeah, and, and that, that takes has, more of that. That has more than that, and that comes to, um, uh, if we put $200 a month into it, that's $2,400. And that's just on the normal things. I've just sent everybody a letter. We've got a, a special called meeting on the 5th. Uh, it's for the tax, uh, for the election commission, which we had already voted on once and approved it, but then the state come back and says that we did something wrong. We have to do it again. Now, if we do not approve this, there won't be any August 4th election. 
That's what I'm told by the election administrator. I'm sure that... What's, what's in that election? Uh, well, we only have one down here, which is uh, uh, the, uh, the tax assessor. Tax assessor and yeah. uh, one uh, first district school board Oh, yeah, member. school board member, right. And then presidential primary? Is that in there? No, it was in March. Oh, that's right. That's over. Yeah, it's not until November. That's already over. Then, yeah, yeah, that's right. Primary's primary's over. over. Yeah. <clears throat> but so anyway... Have have it then, th there is... <laughs> I wonder if they can make that threat of promise not to have an election. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's the state saying they can't do it. Because because the fifth the, the fifth district, my district here, remember we had voted on well you didn't Bill, but remember we had voted on the ones that the city had already annexed out on Auburn Town Road, Auburn Hills, different places like that, and then around and that brought in maybe forty voters. But them voters are supposed to vote in the fifth district now. And so there's, we have voters that are in the fifth, second, second, fourth. You Auburn know, Auburn Hills out there was in the first district for a while. Left side of the road was. So that's why it's got to be cleared up. And so if I imagine they say that if somebody isn't, what is it that they used to say if if one person is denied liberty, disenfranchised. Yeah, something like that. You know, if you're if you're denied liberty, everybody denied it or oh, okay. something like that, you know. Something somebody a whole lot smarter than me said, you know. Bob, do we have to advertise every time in the courier? Or could we, could there, we advertise them? There's a state law about that. There's a state law that says that I can say this. On the very first, say September or October, I can say that the, the county commission will meet on these dates. Woo. That's all I have to put in. Do they have to be in Once the paper? A year. Or can it be posted no it says paper it does have to be in there. yeah yeah it says paper. would that save money and what they usually do well um yeah but well, that's one i think I it will make a whole lot of knows, people so. upset really uh they want to know what's coming up so they can be here Everybody you know <laughs> Might be better for y'all. Might be better for us. <laughs> I, just hate, I just hate for, like you said, for the every, we're asking everybody to trim their budgets and we're doubling our. Yeah. That's well, just, we I have taken hate. on a whole lot more than most other ones have, though. That's the first time in how many years, though. Yeah, it hadn't increased in mm -hmm. at least six years. Yeah. Ma'am? Um, I have a suggestion, and I don't know if this will work or not, but if you're going to meet every month and you, and you know what date you're going to meet, the way the Election Commission does it, is they've got it posted all their dates for the whole year and i don't know if they charge them less to do that they just keep it on the courier on it's the just, website uh-huh on the website and it's there all the time and i don't know if they charge less for that or not i don't know yeah uh, like I say, I, it says in the um the law says that you can just put it in the paper one time uh, a year and let them know that this is what you're going to do but that's not letting and not letting grandma out there know what's going on. Okay. So I, I, I feel uh, I'm the same way. Um, but like I say, I, I've shown where everything goes, there's nothing that's over and above, you know. But that's up to y'all. <laughs> well, after we make our recommendation, though, we'll need your vote to help pass it. <laughs> <laughs> well,. Yeah. well I don't know that one's going to make a difference. Oh, and one I, often, often makes a difference in you know, ten, doesn't it? Yeah, man, oh. man, here lately, Dad. Y'all have been in position to break ties. Mm. <laughs> That's right. where you come in. Yeah, or, or be in the position that first one to vote. Yeah. Yeah. I like the last one yeah, to vote. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know that. That's the one thing Daddy warned me about when I ran. Yeah. ran. Is it alphabetical? <laughs> It's by district and district. alphabetical. Oh, it's okay. first district works first, and then alphabetically, if somebody named Adams or Alexander would run, I would, I'd yeah. be second. I'd be second. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Bob. You are. And I'm glad you're here for the of uh, the discussions of the other of the uh, library. Would you listen to their uh, yeah, yeah. their pleas and, and those others? Uh, you know, when when she hired on, um, they knew that she was moving down to Tullahoma. You know that the library board mm -hmm. did as far as it goes. She's done a great job with this library. Yeah. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not supposed to argue either way when it comes with that, but but uh, it's got to be killing her coming from 
near Tullahoma up here all the time to go to work. But she's done a good job and she likes it here. Oh yeah, she does. Yeah. We just don't have a lake, I reckon. Mm. You know? <laughs> now, the circuit, Lynn said go ahead and go over her budget, but she couldn't be here. Okay. So we'll go over circuit court in, uh, in five minutes. She's put a 5% pay increase in for her people. It's like, hers is up about $12,000. What page is that on? 15. 15. Okay. Circuit Court, the administrative officer has got a state mandated raise, and then the clerical personnel, she's asking for, to go from 82000 to eighty seven. Jury and witness fees, let me get my old budget here. That's uh, 5000 How much has she spent? She spent... Hang on just a minute. Last year we approved five thousand. You ready to leave it at five? Yep. Thirteen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thirteen on the old one. It's yeah. fifteen on the new one. Yeah. Five thousand. Five thousand? Okay. So that's one cut we're making right now. Okay. All right. Uh, Social Security, retirement, employee, insurance, Medicare. Skip all them. Communication, three thousand. Uh, last year we approved twenty six hundred. How much she used? She spent twenty five or seven, and we'll have at least one more. All right. We'll go to twenty seven fifty. Twenty seven fifty. That's good. All right. Dues and memberships. No contracts with other public agencies. Next one is a uh, ninety-five hundred. Is what we approved last year. She's dropped that. I think that's her uh, computer. Okay, contract. and seventy-five hundred is she's dropped it, hasn't she? About two thousand dollars. We're gonna leave it. What she spent? Eighty-eight, eighty-two. And now she thinks she can get it for seventy-five. Okay, that's good. Just leave it at seventy-five. Dues and membership six hundred. Last year we approved one hundred and forty two. What'd you spend? One forty. One forty. We're gonna we're gonna two hundred. Two hundred, all right, that's fine. Why did she ask for six hundred when it just is hundred and forty two? Unless there's something for the year before is five twenty three. Yeah, unless she's actual gonna five twenty three. Yeah, the actual is five the audited actual is yeah, five twenty three. Okay. Legal notices seven hundred. Last year we approved five hundred. How much she spent? One hundred eighty nine. Stay at five hundred. Well, she the year before was two sixty audited. Why not three hundred? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, what you, what did you say? She was a hundred and something. One hundred eighty nine. Let's go to three hundred. Thank you, James. Now, maintenance and repair on office equipment. Asking for 3000 We approved 1500 last year. 1380 1380 1500 again. Uh, postage. Asking for 3500 Last year we approved 2500 2500 again. Printing stationery and forms, she asked for 5000 Last year we approved 2000 What'd she spend? 1955 2000 again. Other contracted services. She puts that in there. I think that is for if she has to have a, a sign, somebody to come do sign language. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, for the interpreters. Right, but she did, she hasn't used it this year. She don't ever know. She said when she's going. Yeah, that's right. It, so. so we put a thousand dollars in there last year. Let's leave a thousand dollars in there this year. Okay. And then office supplies. She's requesting six thousand. Last year we approved five. What she spent? Four thousand three thirty four. But now she's got some, another else. month to go. Yeah, she uh, just ordered five thousand, just like last year. Now you've got all those changes. Yes. 
Okay. Now, I wish, uh, you know, if we could do the whole, we're going to have to do that exact same thing with all of these budgets. And we've already done it with some of them. Now, Diane has got us two, you know, uh, draft copies here, one including a salary increase of the people that are not mandated, and then one including those. And is that that's a, each department's request, not an overall like a three percent? Right, it's, it's what just what they've they asked. Uh -huh. okay. But uh, she <clears throat> has also got figures here for the different. Here, Tony. The, here's what, how all of our employees and how much a one, the state workers got a 1.6% increase, right? If we gave all the other people a 1.6, how much it would cost us? It cost us $41,928. Two cents. Two cents. Where are you saying that? That's on the back. Oh, I know this <laughs> It's going to be three cents for three percent. Yeah. That's for the county employees? That's for the county employees that are not getting a raise because the state, you know, doesn't right. require it's not, it. Right. Does this count in the school system? No. No, it don't count the school system, and it, but does it count uh, the uh, ambulance service? It does yes. count the ambulance Sheriff. service. Sheriff. Sheriff. Everybody. Everybody getting a one point six over last year. And of course the elected officials is the same under the three percent because those won't change. So I just put this yeah. in there too. Okay. Now does that does that include the uh, the additional Social Security and Medicare or is this just um, just salary? No, I didn't yeah. No, I didn't put that in there. I just did the salaries. Just okay. salaries. So it's well, there's so many Social Security and so it'd be enough. Seven point six five and retirement would be seven point six five. We have to pay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the retirement's what? Nine point six five. You ain't self-employed like me. You gotta pay both sides of that. <laughs> yeah, but I've always heard you make about half a million. You heard wrong. Seven point six five and what? Nine point six five for the retirement. So you roughly add your five, six thousand dollars more. Another seventeen point three of that total forty-one. So about twenty-five, about six thousand dollars. So that would run into about forty-seven. So two cents would. Two cents roughly get it. Roughly. But this is what Diane brought for our information. Right. Get, get Kevin George one of them too, and okay. Kevin Mooneyham. You know, make sure both yeah, numbers one. Yeah, I got extra copies. You got extra copies there. Anything else that you've got for us? Well, to, uh, um, I had the trustee give me May's revenue the other day, so I put on the back what changes I made because it was quite a bit more than what I was expecting. It so expecting so I increased. Our very first, um, James, what would that raise that three percent up to? Did you figure that out? That's what Bill said about six thousand. Yeah. I saw six thousand to it. So I ciphered it, but I did it wrong. So <laughs> the wrong button, so I didn't recalculate it. I don't know if that makes sense on the back. And, all right, you, uh, I'll, I'll let you explain it after I make a comment here. We heard from CTASC that you know we had been estimating revenues uh, very conservatively, and therefore we were getting in more revenue than we were. All right, here Diane has gotten us some harder numbers, um, more accurate numbers of what. The revenue is going to be now. Go ahead, Diane. Well, I just went on the back. I showed you what I had estimated for eleven twelve. The, fir the first column is estimated, right. yeah. And then the next column is as what I changed it to, based on May figures. And then uh, on the first one on property taxes, I estimated fifteen thousand for June because last year that's about what it was. And then the third column is what I had budgeted for next year, and then the fourth is how. I, the change I made to that based on May's revenues. So uh, does that make sense? Or? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. So the bottom well, line is... I just pulled some magic numbers out of the air. Like <laughs> All right, now these, these total figures right here. Is this 159,906, this is 11, this is the difference in what you estimated before and right. now what you're estimating? Mm -hmm. What is the 119,000? In next year's, I, I up that by 119,000. 
<coughs> so our revenue for next year that we're all right, is that reflected in these two budgets that you gave us tonight? Yes. You made the changes in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in, in these two budgets, the one with the red line and the one with right. the blue line, she has upped the revenue right. to okay. better reflect what's come in as of May uh, the twenty first. Mm -hmm. So we still got a whole nother month, so we could it could be even and you were told last year, and you'll hear this again, by waiting till October and you got better numbers. That's not necessarily the case. If you'll go back and think, it started out they needed a 20 cent increase. Okay. They're saying, well, look, we waited and that saved us eight cents. It didn't save us eight cents. What happened is it took two out of fund balance, out of debt service and put over. Well, no, that went to solid water. So you could write that off. Water. But you took, uh, uh, you took a lot more out of fund balance than you did with 20 cents. You were only going to take, like, at that time, 100 and something thousand. Yeah. You wound up taking 400,000 or 300,000 or whatever. And revenues are a little better, according to Diane, than we expected. I, I didn't realize I've been cooked with this. I didn't realize that's good news, but. Uh, yeah, because, you know, the first meeting is talking about, and I'm going just to the bottom line, he was talking about a, it was, well, the original budget was $450,000 deficit into our. Mm -hmm. You know, in our uh, fund balance, and now it's 283, so it's That's quite a bit more revenue. Yeah, made it a difference. Looks a lot there. better after. And, and two, you still got a lot of spending in there. Like some people mm -hmm. ask for five percent raises, some three, and there's a lot of spending to come out of there yet. Back to the, the discussion that we had very first with uh, Doug from CTAS. Yes, the school uh, has got fund balance. Yes, the highway fund, but you, you, you hit it right on the head, Todd. Well, so you, Ninety percent of that is in those two things. The one point seven million is is not cause the county commission no. has been uh, you know and squirreling I think, money away. And I think if we had Barbara here to explain it more, I think she'd be able to tell us that that capital outlay's got it somewhere it's going. See, that's that's not good to have somebody like him explain that without Barbara being because she might have had an answer for everything he said, and we don't. And, and she should have been here and probably can answer anything. But we'll 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 have her yeah. here, and they'll get opportunity to. Another thing too. Uh, and these these are uh, these numbers can be accessed off the internet. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not nothing that anybody you know that he's got that nobody else has. It's in the audit, uh, and you can just go to these same pages and find them. But looking at the general fund, I would challenge anybody to, to try to do any better than we've been doing. Me too. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know. Did anybody sense it's about the lack of revenue? We had gotten up to 1.4 million in fund balance, the highest county counties ever had. The Dr. recession of 2008 hit. We have managed to go through this recession without any, Negative. basically without a tax increase until last year. At what, 12? 12. Uh, we've done really well considering the times. Now, we're getting to the point, if the economy does, and it sounds like it's beginning to improve. These numbers are really encouraging, what Diane's told us tonight. But my point is, we haven't raised taxes that much. Uh, people can throw a bunch of numbers out there and get you confused in a hurry, just like here a while back. Doug made the statement to Diane in our office, says we raised taxes 12 cents and didn't even need a tax increase last year. All right, now take 12 cents off of revenue and see if we need it. Well, what just take 12 cents off of his figures right here? You know, he, he says the variance was 2.1 cents. <laughs> All right, let me tell now, you. I, I, unless we can steal money from the highway fund and, yeah, and, school, and, fund. and the school fund said <laughs> budget to, to, to fund our budget, that's not right. And what you've got to keep in mind, uh, you increased, and I say you, I mean the commission increased spending last year quite a bit at the jail. Mm-hmm. So we had to raise taxes, plus we were looking for a, a lack of revenue, which may be a little better than we expected. So uh, we increased spending last year, and if you increase it this year, you're gonna have to raise taxes again. In my, and then when it's all said and done, you'll see I'm telling you the truth. You'll, you'll have to. So uh, my point is, they, they did. I'm gonna show you how things get confused. We bought a $200,000 fire truck. I've got the paperwork down there to show you. 
they were going to uh, a grant. grant. Doug comes in and looks at this thing, and he automatically he says, Mike wrote a $200,000 check and held it so the fund balance would look bad. He never thought to look and see if the grant would come in. The grant come in three weeks before I wrote the check. If I hadn't written the check, we'd have had 200000 too much. We're more than, and, and they were going Greg to make didn't it. Say, uh, Doug didn't say that. That was from the auditors. The auditor didn't say that. Mm -hmm. Auditor, no, he didn't. I, I deal with auditors every day. Doug said that, and Kevin George brought it up, that I held a check to make the balance look off. That's not true. The money come in two or three weeks before I wrote the check. So why did you write the check? Because we had to write it by March 31st. $200,000? Yeah, the money was here, Bob. It I was a There was $190,000 that we and, had to and, pay. And you commissioners voted 10 to put with it to buy a fire truck. Right, right. And then the truck had to uh, recall and they had to send it back. So then when the auditors come in, we switched from a uh, warrant to a check system. So then we voided it and wrote a check thing. I mean, uh, before you can say somebody has disfigured the numbers, 200000 you need to find out if the money's come in yet. That'd be the first thing I'd look at. Well, if he wrote a $200,000 check, let's see if the money was here. If the money hadn't been here, he'd have been right. I think we need to wait to have Doug here to counter what you said. I don't have to have Doug. I've already hey, countered it with him. That, I've got the paper I can show we've you. All, we've all seen it. And we've all seen the check, mm -hmm. you know. As far as that goes. But if you get two hundred thousand, all right, I've got a water grant coming up. If I get three hundred thousand dollars in for that water grant, and if I don't write checks for it, say this figure's gonna be three hundred dollars, right? Gonna be an inflated three hundred thousand. So once I write that check, it balances out. That's what happened on the fire truck. But he was saying I was holding the check to make make it look bad. When the auditor saw that that buddy was written for the fire truck. Mm -hmm. Okay, they saw that it was a legal thing to do. Illegal, a legal, a -legal oh. thing to do, and then but and they showed that there was two hundred thousand here that was being used. Everything was fine, but then they also had the the federal government that given one hundred ninety thousand to it, mm -hmm. and then we bring the check back, which means that we have two hundred thousand dollars more than what the audit said that we had. The audit already looked at it and balanced it out. I, I don't know what you're saying. All I'm saying is we had we had 190000 in our account and our check had been written for it. Before you know, I, I know, Mike, that you have, you think that uh, Doug is out to get you. No, I don't think that. But I know that you don't, don't like him. He, he don't like me. Well, no, no. no. We're I, not going to get into that but discussion but now. Well, no, but we need to get into something on the fact that you said that, that Barbara should be here to answer that all them questions. Right. That's fine. She should because all Doug, we're we're really uh, fortunate to have somebody like that here. I disagree, all, but you I know I know you opinion. disagree because we're not going to have that discussion show. now. But let's what? not let's not have that discussion now. But when we all have? the all the figures here that Doug had, we we went through every single one of them and, and we're. Very polite and not going to do anything but that. You're very now, polite, but now that he's now, not here, wait just then you can attack him. No, I'm not attacking him. I'm no, saying. You're not. Mike is. I've said everything I've said tonight to his face. That's I'm, I'm saying that the majority of the money that he's talking about is in the highway fund and the general proper school fund, and we can't do anything about it. You're and I said that right in front of you. Yeah, uh, right. yeah we've, we made that same point but right the there. the way it's written right. up, it I appears we've got a lot of money that we don't have. And I, and I don't think Doug, uh, Doug didn't at this meeting say anything about the two hundred thousand dollars for the no. for the thing. No. For the uh, I brought the two hundred thousand up because that, that shows you how you can get you can you get, get twist figures around. That's right, especially at the end of the year mm -hmm. when you re and, and these bills that come in uh, have to be paid. But if you wait, it'll go over into the next year. Some people try to use the audit figures to uh, throw mud at the administration, and I don't think that's an accurate description of the way they ought to be used. Well, for the way this year has gone, it, it certainly turned out to be right. There have been some. There's been people that have been indicted and and uh, uh, convicted and everything else. So. 
I don't think that's something that that everything everybody's just planning to do. It just came naturally because it happened. But that was a small thing that was caught. I mean, if it had not been caught for ten years, maybe you should worry about it. But I don't think it. You know, it, they were caught and they were dealt with as soon as it was realized, and the courts took care of it. Isn't that right? No, we've been known about for a while. I don't know why it was taken, wasn't taken care of before. The All right. Didn't show it. Though. You Pardon have me? a yearly audit. The audits didn't show it. I mean, I don't know where you get that. that where, you where can't go indict you? somebody on uh, rumors and innuendo. You've Thanks. got the auditors had to pick that stuff up. Maybe I'm just fortunate because I was law enforcement that I'm still kept in the loop. Good. Well, you need to get the auditors in the loop because they didn't catch it, and once they caught it and told me there was fraud, she, the person you're referring to was fired. It's it's kind of hard to miss sixty-seven thousand dollars. It's not. It's thirty-seven, thirty-seven, and it's not all in money. Some of it's where she's paid people for not working and all that. Some of it was. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But the audit committee's gone through all of that. You need to wait on their report. But my point is, once. It was brought out. She was replaced. We were going to go over our office and the county buildings. Too. Okay. Y'all do that like really You want to do, you know, do county buildings? Y'all all right to do county buildings? Tony, you all right to do county buildings? Yeah. Let me dig my stuff back out. I thought we was through. Sorry. Right. <laughs> so ours is on page 12. 12 for the county building. Ours is up $1,085 on the last year. Page 12. Good night, Glenn. And I tell you what I did. I uh, we put for everybody that worked for me except one. I think we put a 1.6 raise in there. Uh, I told one. Diane what would happen if y'all did three. Everybody did three. What are you looking at? County mayor doing looking at county mayor on the uh, page twelve. Okay. <laughs> Off the two new ones from today. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right, administrative officer, sixty-seven eight forty-three, accountants and bookkeepers, thirty thousand three hundred and sixty. Secretary nineteen five forty-one, training, two hundred. That's the one with no one, Grace. Yeah, I've got the wrong one. It doesn't matter. The rest of it. All right, rest out the same. I've already gone over the changes. <laughs> Social Security, State Retirement, Medicare, Audit Services, $4,200. Communication, $5,500. Contracts of government agencies, $7,400. What is that for? That is our, um, is that? that's the planning that, uh, okay. you know, that was with Yes. You. All right. Contacts with other public agencies. What's that one for? That is our uh, software support for local government. It's gone down actually this time. Yeah, it went down from a, we approved 6,100 last year and it's now to 53. We updated our computers and it went down. I don't know, it don't make sense, but <laughs> we, got, we got a bill for it. So. <coughs> Good. Legal services, 2,500. Uh, legal notices, 2,300. Same as last year, fifteen hundred for maintenance and repair of office equipment, fifteen hundred for postal. Same as last year, five hundred for travel. Same as last year, office supplies three thousand. Last year we approved twenty seven fifty. And that's because we have another printer and we have to buy ink. Okay. Those All right. And other five hundred dollars for a total of one seventy six sixty. Well, I've got the wrong one. 172. 172. 172. 501. Yeah. Get the right one out here now. Here it is. 172, 501. Last year it was 171, 416. Any questions, anybody? Tony? $1,085, but that is that includes the 1.6 for me and 1.6 for Karen Charlotte. So that's your, that's your whole amount right there. Does anybody have a, any question for the county mayor? Yeah. That's a 
That's a thousand dollars more. Okay. Go over to county buildings now. What page? Next page. You may not agree with this, but that first line is. Uh, oh no no, I'm thinking. Yeah. The first line is Daryl Fisher. Daryl hasn't had a race since he's been hired because we've had freezes, you know, for the last what? Mark mm -hmm. five years. Yes. He he has to go to training every year to work inmates. He works three and four inmates, and y'all wouldn't have any idea. You just can't imagine how much he does uh, that has saved us in repairs and that kind of thing. Plus, we're getting our buildings up just like the old school over here. Uh, that thing, I thought you'd have to take a bulldozer and push it down. We've got that a maintenance <coughs> shop. We've got a litter control over there now. And we've got the apprentice over there now. And they've got that building looking pretty good and it's really working out good. Put a new roof on it? Well, about half of it and we're going, we're going to put 10 on the other part this year after two by one. But, and he hadn't had a raise and he's, he's electrician, a bricklayer, a carpenter, he can do it all, plumber. Uh, yeah, but that still falls under the county employee, though, don't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd hate to give him one and not give well, nobody else one. I mean, that just falls back the same, well, you know, I, same as everybody else. That's fine if you want to do that. I'm the why, why reason I jacked him up three thousand is because of his skill level. Right. Now, if y'all don't want to do it, that's fine. But I, I just, I, I don't know how long I can hold him at twenty two thousand. Yeah. Um, hopefully, from as long as I'm here, I can keep him. That's the reason we've done that. All right. The retirement and all that is is a is with the salary. Communication three oh seven two thousand dollars. Uh that's up from last year. Right? Yeah, because we have more phones? A couple more we're paying in there. More phone bills that you're paying in there on county buildings, okay. Contracts of private agencies, 200. Same as last year. Maintenance agreements, 15,966. <coughs> this year it's 16,255. About $200 more. Okay. Who's that maintenance that service with? I mean, that's janitorial, James excuse me. That's James Estes. Is that a, yeah, that's a one and a half? 1.6. Yeah, 1.6. Maintenance agreements now. Uh, Right, a thousand dollars. Last year it was nine fifty. I think that's uh, the elevator. elevator I'm it is. A month. Maintenance it's on the elevator. So it's just a fee we have to pay. Okay. Thirty-two thousand is the next one for maintenance on buildings. Well, we spent almost thirty-two this year, so I just I okay. <laughs> and uh, maintenance on vehicles. You've requested a thousand last year, got five hundred. <coughs> what do we spend? Nine thirty one. Nine thirty one, okay. Leave it at a thousand then. Custodial supplies, twenty five hundred, that's the same as last year. And that gives us uh, and then the utilities are all the different buildings that the county has, the the utilities for them. And I'm not really sure on that one. Um we budgeted 131 last year and I dropped it to 120. But Does that include the school buildings and stuff too? No. no. 125? Because we, we've spent 99 this year and we, we still a, have a few more to go. Had so. a warm winter. And you had a warm winter. It was 123 so that, the year before, so. Yeah, so <coughs> that may need to be changed. 125 seems pretty reasonable. And that brings total for county buildings. <clears throat> Even with uh, increase in salaries, uh, two hundred ten thousand four ninety two, and last year we approved two oh eight uh, seven, so that's less than two thousand dollars, less than two thousand dollars difference. All right. Any questions, Tony? Mm -hmm. Todd? James, any comments on county buildings, Mike? No. Yeah, but I took the elevator. 
Yeah, we don't want to cut the bell. <laughs> Thank God we have to pay that. It's been no. well. We we Keep just started that certified. year or so ago. They would come every time we had a problem. So they said they said it'd be a better deal for us. We found seventy, isn't it, a month? Seventy yeah, dollars a month. month. And they they do preventive maintenance. And actually, it saved us money because we haven't had to have them come out and do anything. Hadn't had a repair. Yeah. And I just want to tell you that y'all ask about um, the ambulance that Ricky wanted to buy. Was it approved? It was not approved. Y'all put it off to the next meeting, but th you wanted him to check on that grant first, and he said that the the grant wants approval from the commission. That, so it's kind of like what, uh, one of the things that, that we had put out, Diane was, and and the uh, committee here is that we're trying to. Uh, I'm, I'm making a. Uh, a motion, you know how we were going to get the fire trucks. We were going to go put the fire trucks on there and an ambulance on there. That way it won't have to be dealt with. Um, for the bid for the loan. For, yeah. Is that what, what you understood, Diane? Is that what we're. That would be on. It would be 115000 for the ambulance. Right. Problem with bidding it before y'all approve it, though, the bid will. If it lasts 30 days, if it's good for 30 days, it'll surprise me. So if you bid it, it's going to change by the time you get ready to buy it anyway. That's yeah, the well, we've got the, it, they're going to be opened on the first. Remember what day? Yeah, the bid that we're having. We've already sent them two, and now we've got to renege on them and send them a third one. Why? Um, uh, well, we sent. The 245 one, and then we went back and set one for 310. One for three, yeah, three now, now Doug's called and said we got to send them another one, so I'm, I'm just going to bid right now the two fire trucks because that's all y'all Because that's what we've approved already. Yeah, approved. yeah, it was coming up as an uh, amendment type deal. Okay. Um, uh, any other comments? What do y'all think about putting ambulance service by itself? We, I, mean, I, think, I, I think it'd be We bad. need to make a motion that we put ambulance and reach by itself. I Problem. pulled Reach out just so y'all could look at it right. and see. So if right. you want to just kind of see. Will that make Reach easier for you? Really? Gosh, yes. Why would, I mean, if y'all decide to do that, why would you need county court approval? And I'll tell you why. Uh, I mean, it's still, it's going to be the same budget. It's just going to be separate. Well, one of the questions I had is for the next, this year, when we do, if we do that and pull it into its own fund, it, it will start, a fund balance starts at zero. We're going to have to move operating funds over from general fund to that fund to start it. That's the part I didn't know if we had to, if we could oh, do as a budget okay. committee, because it's going to be a significant yeah. amount. It, right. It'll be a, you know, I mean, I don't is know there, how many months. Todd, you've researched this more than you've Is there quite a bit of benefit by separating? The, I looked at it a lot because several people asked me. Ricky asked me too, and Doug had talked about it before, so I took that as him wanting me to research it more and, and I think the commission wanted me to look at it too and uh, public perception of taxes is is everything and I think if you could list out I mean I, I, I people I've asked in my community in district two anyway they that interested them to see how much of that tax money went to each service you know general fund they just they don't know what it is you know it's just it's everything but they really liked the idea of being able to see what each service, like the ambulance service is going to cost 20 cents out of the tax levy. They really wanted to see what the sheriff's department is going to cost them, but I don't think we can do that legally. i uh, research that too. But it, there's several other counties that do, do that. The money comes in patient charges and it's mixed in here in revenue and a lot of the commissioners don't realize that money comes in and it's directly from our billing from the ambulance service. It just goes into the general fund and it, you know, it's just part of the big number. You know. and of course, we show it as revenue from the ambulance service, right. but as far as a casual person. Yeah, if you just look, people on the internet pulling up our uh, county audit don't understand patient charges is, is taking off what the operating cost right. of the ambulance service is. Another thing that it, for accounting wise, and I'm not sure Doug, I'm sure Doug, he's an accountant. Uh, and I, I'm, one thing, every and it's in the very first part of our audit from last year and the years before, you can count a percentage of uncollected revenue by and through the ambulance service through taxes you can count on uncollected taxes off of what your your services are a percentage for taxes but for the ambulance service it's it says a historical data i don't know if it's three years or five years but say we bill out 
a million dollars a year, which is, I'm just throwing a number out there. And we only get back 452,000 worth of patient charges. That deficit, we can write off of our budget if it's separated into its own fund. And you'll, you'll have to do all that because I don't have any idea, I just can just read. And that makes certain counties, and the one he brought us was Perry County, by putting that uncollected services in part of your budget, it makes you, in account for all accounting purposes, it offsets your negative. So it makes you look more like you're in the black. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. So in other words, it's not as pretty as the pictures? No, uh, Perry County actually, I talked to the director, the one that's in that list, and this year they're really, they're 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 really worried because they're looking like they're they're going to be way in the negative this well, year. Perry County is the one that's always used to. Yeah, and it's always because they're in the black quite a bit. I mean, because they're making they're money. Got two units in one station, just like us. That's that's the reason they're about the size of the county we are. No, they got a lot less population. Oh, okay. yeah, but they but still have to. But they might, but they still collect a large amount of revenue. You right. know, they have a lot of ambulance calls yeah. and it gets paid. But that, you know, demographics changes that. Uh, the, the income level of the people you're serving changes that because private insurance always pays more than pen care, but that's a whole different. Anyway, that, you asked me what would be the difference in putting its own fund. The difference is we can count the uncollectibles and it'll make the books look better. <laughs> Which makes no sense to me as a lay person. they won't be better. No, technically no. they're not better, dollar wise. Well, but but, in a, but using that, an account. That makes Prairie County look better. Right. That's right. And every See, county that does that. Every time ambulance service comes up, Prairie County is used, we need to do like Prairie County. But Technically, technically it, it doesn't help. Right. But physically, yeah. I guess is the right I word. I still think that way the, you know, general public is going to say, okay, ambulance service, Cost it's costing cents. us, you know, 20 yeah. cents of our tax rate or 30 yeah. cents or whatever it is. That's right. Yeah, and if you, you know, and, if, if it and needed. And the schools are costing 90. 93 cents or whatever, you know. Makes a, the accountability there. You right. know what you're paying for. You come back and it's quarter for this, then it makes more sense. But that that's the only reason I'm, I think it's a Ty, good they, idea. Well, they, uh, um, after you get them started, uh, and, and what were James was saying, James was saying, say that you had a certain amount of tax money for them, um, they would feed it right back into the place. I mean, if they started uh, collecting a lot of money. And yeah, and the, they, say the fund balance went up to $3 million. Okay, and, and then they would operate theirs on that internal money. Yes, plus it's still there would still be a tax levy, they, they but we could reduce. There would still be a twenty cent yeah. tax, yeah. but we could reduce that tax levy yeah, as a they commission. Never have to, they wouldn't have to call on county right. anymore. Right. And the the idea well, is well, they would in the budget committee, just like they do this right. year. It would just be in its own standalone thing. That's the only difference. And the other difference is we wouldn't be able to pull out of the ambulance services fund balance and put it into the right. general fund. Right. It'd right. be right. like solid waste. Yeah, it would work just like solid waste. Mm -hmm. And I just think and it's reach a good would idea. too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, and, and, and and see, Doug has got uh, Bob. Doug has got the after school program for Bedford County in here because it's run by the county also. Mm -hmm. Several of his uh, ideas here, we're in, we're, we're already implement. talking about. An I mean, I think they're good. And the uh, the the one about reach right here, and then Diane's already got us a proposed budget by itself. Okay. Will that be easier for you, Diane, mm -hmm. to put it in its own? Why place? don't we just call, why don't we start calling it uh, County County After School Program? Okay. Separate it from that name. Yeah. 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 I think that's a good idea. That would be good. I mean, Bedford County's got uh, you know it, it's called Bed. You know, I know the. Um, well, people could see that way that the county's not funding it. You know. Yeah. They could see where their money's coming from. They could see there ain't nothing coming from the county. Well, I'm telling you, always, we always have to go back and see what we did last year. And it's hard to pull it out of that county general fund. It'd be a lot easier for us. Okay. But for like that to happen, I mean, is that just a consensus, or do we need a motion so that it can be presented to the commissioners? Or well, I make a motion that we put the ambulance well, service in. Yeah, y'all have to make a recommendation. When you hold on, Lisa, you when you guys are finished with this, let's just say that everything's done and you get ready to send your recommendation to the full commission. Why couldn't you separating these two ambulance for each? I don't part know. of that recommendation. I think it ought to be. See what I'm That's saying? better than me making that motion. We just oh, wait. you make that motion now to separate both of them and send them to the commission. Yeah. With your 
with the suggestion or whatever as far as the tax rate. And the operating fund, fund moving budget. from the general fund but <laughs> So you're making the motion? Yeah. We're going to have to give you seed money. Yeah, you can't get, you know, I don't know how many months we have to do that. That's technically. Huh? Does County General get it back? No, that'll be a one-time transfer from County General. That'll that will go of, in. That'll be out of fund balance. That will, yeah, that'll go right into the ambulance service. But now part of what, what part of what's in fund balance now, though, is you being used for operations. Right. I mean, anyway. same, it's, it's just moving. I just, I don't, I'm not, <coughs> I'm not putting it around in there. No. I, yeah. But keep in mind, fund balance is getting lower and lower. No, but it's still just moving from one one it's page a, to another page. Yeah, it's the same money. Line. You're just taking it out of this yeah. pocket and putting it in the other pocket. But oh, you can't yeah. take it back yeah. out once you put it Bottom in there. Line, is what I'm saying. saying. We've got to be very careful about how much you put over. Yeah, there. we need yeah. to know. Yeah. We need to put. There needs to be four months in there, three to four months at least. I don't know what the. But see, they'll be getting the. Till you generate enough revenue to right. operate your sales, what you're saying. Yeah, the, uh, the people seed that money. do your building now, though, are they, what are they, are they in or out? Are they in or out what? You're going to still keep the. Your the building. Ones that are you're going to keep building. the building company that you're using now. Yes, right, right yeah. now. How fast do they get money back to you? They, it, the first two months were really slow because of 10 Care and Medicare. They had to get approved. The certifications had to come through from the billing company. Through Cannon County to, to Medicare and Tinker. So the first two months of that, two to three months, 90 days, you showed a real loss in revenue. But I believe that Diane can even show that every month it's getting higher and higher that they're sending We've back. The city turns in between 38 and 40,000 a month. Yeah. So now they, they, they come back with the money to the county. And we're already days. above just the new, the new uh, budget Diane just gave us. We're already above last year's revenue right now. Before yeah, June comes we in, got, we got a month. And oh, the revised one. Yeah, the revised last, one's like twenty. Week, it's like twenty thousand to the positive. I may be off a little bit. Yeah. You gonna make a motion to put reach and ambulance on standalone budgets? Yes, and to put and to start to operate to transfer operating funds for that budget. Ambulance. For the ambulance. For the ambulance service budget. At, a, at a, an amount to be determined later. Amount to be determined by the budget committee. Yep. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion been made by Todd, second by James to, you heard the motion. All in favor, let me know I'm saying aye. Aye. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Do we have a quorum? Right. Sorry. All right. We're Do missing two. Do we have a quorum? We got five. I just want to make sure. I know. Right. I mean, that's a good question, but yeah, we have five. Yeah, that's five. We got five out of seven. Four. Oh, you got four. Yeah, yeah. But you still have a majority. You still got majority. I thought you was well, part of the committee. Seven. No, I ain't on the budget committee. Four I thought that seven. was revised. Clint's not here. Clint's not here. Clint's not here. Clint. Clint. Yeah. But Kevin. Four, four or seven. Four out of seven, seven is a quarter. Four out of okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. But I thought that and, uh, each one commissioner from each district was part of the committee this year. We got three well, commissioners are. missing. So the I mean, two cabins is missing and Clint's missing. I know, but you, you are a part or you're not a part? Hey, no, he, me and Clint's in the Clint same district. Him and Clint. Clint. Okay. All right. I'm with hey, you. Let him sit up with you. I'm with you now. <laughs> he should have keep us up. Tony's my left hand man. <laughs> I know. I know. All right. I'm with you now. He just wants to stay up to date, and I'm thankful for him. I wish they were all here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Next like week at 6 o'clock, right? Yeah. And Thursday. the fire department and, and the uh, sheriff, right? That's right. Fire department and sheriff. Are we what? Bob, Can you get a copy of that hard. Are we having hard two? Are we having two commission meetings next month? Special call in the regular. Okay. Just one week apart. So if you're going to get something now, I need to have somebody. June first. You're welcome. Okay.